I thought because like the way they're going, they're slowly like, keep doing it slowly, like like slowly bring out more details. I didn't want to like dump it all on us at the last like yeah, ten minutes here. Yeah. So. But you wanted oh, a time skip. Oh. You should have specified, sir. <laughs> now, now look what we got. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. Oh, it's my fault. Huh? <laughs> yeah, like, it's because you kept vouching for a time, time, time skip. You, you, said, you know what? Here, here, you just said time no. skip, time skip, no. time skip. No. Now, now we got. <laughs> What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Anime Izuka Podcast, week 8 of the winter 2021 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stratton. Hello! Also, I speak Kuma. <laughs> Next up, we have Ku. Yo, yo! Next up, we have Justin. Good evening, everyone. And finally, we have Taylor. Hello! All right, and also, uh, later on, we'll have Brian and Sasa joining us. And then right before we start, um, I guess there's the only thing I'll briefly mention is that there was some sort of like Hatsune Miku anime that was announced. I have no idea what that's Ooh. gonna be about. They didn't mention any details. What what it's gonna be? Or I think they mentioned maybe who was making it, but it's like very little details. So we'll just wait till um you hear more about it. That's for you, Tang. If you plan on ever watching this podcast. <laughs> so right on. I'll first so, do shout outs for the people who who joined us in uh who joined us in Twitch. Um uh, uh, Joker, uh, thank you as well for joining us. Uh, I, I missed that name earlier. Johan, again, thank you for three. Uh, th- I think it was a three months of uh, subscribing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did not have to do that, but thank you. Uh, Desmond, Ayush, I got you. Yep. Thank you again for joining us in Twitch and also commenting in the, the videos on YouTube as well. Thank you for the su- for the continued support. Uh, Tizzle, Darren, thank you guys as well for for joining us. It definitely make it a lot more f- a fun of experience for all of us. Uh, Classy Ulysses, thank you for listening to the main podcast and our Team upcoming Aaron, AOT one. Shout out for him and Team Sasha. Aaron. Team Aaron slash Man Bun as well. Team Man Bun. Uh, Zero Dead X21, thank you for your troll comment. Yehu's Satori, <laughs> thank you for your comments on our ReZero video. And then for our new commenters for the uh, Mushoku Tensei video, Nikhil Philip, Christopher, Summer Jazz, Jeffrey Mihan, No Names, Senor Frio. Meaning bean, thank you. And then our also re- the returning comments as well. You should we mentioned uh, we thank you again. Uh, Sonic Cam, Albert, uh, Dr. Sonic Spear, and code number 12. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, shout out, yeah, uh, shout out to all you guys who comments, really appreciate it. Um, we had a comment from I think it was uh, from Albert, but I think uh, for more people too, was hanging out. Um, they had a lot of fun and uh, it's a lot of fun listening to us. So thanks, guys. Uh, this is because uh, basically, this is basically what our Discord calls are, are like. So we want to bring that energy to this podcast, so or make it a podcast for him. So glad you guys are enjoying it. So always appreciate hearing your comments. It makes so it a lot guys. more enjoyable for us as well, too. Yeah. So thanks, guys. It's time for Jujutsu Kaisen. Woo-hoo. Oh, yeah. buddy. Here we go. Welcome, Brian. Welcome. Yes. All right. Let's Before, with the oh, new God. profile pic. I know, right? Go. Before we all go, start, go ahead, before we start this, I just want to ask Brian. Brian, how many times did you clap during this episode? <laughs> the entire way, dude. I was like, this Clap. dude was clapping and dancing. This man was posing. I was that like, boogie woogie though. What? A- yeah, I know, right? Boogie <laughs> woogie. He was ghosting them too with it. I was oh, like, yo, man. what a name, dude. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, I love it, man. The- he's Toto he's- is—he's the best. Is he your favorite character? He's he he now my all-time yeah. favorite character of all time. Brian, say, is he yeah, he's character? up there. He's best. Hell but, yeah! Okay. So, <laughs> Wait, what'd you say, David? Sorry, I, I missed I, it. I was asking is he your favorite character? Brian, was, oh, okay. We already know right. he's Koo's boy. Now we got Brian on, Do it. on the be honest, fan train. My goal is to look as swole as him. <laughs> That's my new goal now. There it is, baby. Uh, there it is. That's my like, new goal. Oh, I, believe, I believe in you. But yeah, guys, he's, not... def- he's definitely one of the best like uh, anime characters they've introduced in a long time for a lot of shows. He's going to be very memorable. Dude, he's the whole package. You know, he's super strong. <laughs> he has an IQ of like 30 some thousand, right? Yeah, it's like 50,000 uh, or something. I was five, like, yo, 5, this man's 000, a genius. 530,000. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. He, he's a nice guy. He's self, very self acclaimed, though. Self acclaimed. <laughs> <laughs> no, did you not see his like thought process that happened in point zero 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 one? Yeah. Yeah. Like, this guy <laughs> is like legit perfect, you know? And he has right. the idol to thank, too, even though it was all in his mind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I can't talking. wait to meet his teacher that they alluded to in this episode as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we finally see everything to her. 
Yeah, yeah, he got like that's probably where he got his taste in woman from, I guess. Like it was probably from her. So. <laughs> yeah, yes, there's a good chance of that. Yeah, it's uh, I, it's I don't know. It, it, well, even like uh, what we found out with the clapping too, it's not like it doesn't uh, happen like every time. He basically can just he can still clap and then when just he chooses, yeah, yeah, he can fake yeah. out. Yep, yeah, it's 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 so good. But again, he's smart in the way that he explained it to Hinami to like completely confuse her of like, oh, when he claps, this will happen. And then her just being like, wait, what the fuck? I mean, yeah, he's yeah. so even with his claims, just IQ, he's still very, he's, he's very tactical. He's a smart fighter, yeah. Yeah. that's for sure. So I, I like how with Jujutsu, they're actually kind of pulling that, but just because like they're giving them information doesn't mean it's true because they did it with the Nanami as well, mm-hmm. where he was, ba- mm-hmm. or because he would, he would just, uh, he had like his giant spiel. And then they even said, like, okay, can I trust this guy? Like, what the fuck? Why would you tell me this? And so, then they kind of did the same thing with uh, with Toto. So in your opinion, would this justify how in every single anime, when there's going to be, like, a super battle or whatever, super power battle, all the characters explains their power to the other party, even though they're, like, people of the opposing parties? Well, the thing is, like, they usually, like, a bunch of anime, they already kind of, like, explain it in a sense, like, um... But the, this this way, this is, like, the first time where they've actually, like, explained it, but not telling the For- truth. Right. For, purpose. Uh, for purpose, yes, I mean, yes, yeah. Well, it makes sense. Like, you know, why sure the fuck that. would you say it? I mean, there's that, but there's still yeah. a bunch of shonen tropes, so it doesn't completely oh, God, see yeah. all shonen tropes. But, but still, I mean, this was, I'll like, say, like this, this was a very fun episode to watch. It was like it just yeah. reminded me so much of DBZ. Like last week the, was like was like Naruto for me. This week was just DBZ of all like the punching, and the yeah. swappings. I, I would agree with that. Like it, it still relies on those shonen tropes, but the manner in which it executes is so fresh and so much like better at the end of the so day when it's like you, you don't yeah you don't really pick up on yeah. on you know them doing those tropes as much and then he's already a beast uh, uh yuji's already a, oh, I mean, a beast with the, the whole uh, the whole yuji yuji black, black flash, black flash yeah. four yeah. times though i don't know about that but it was cool to watch but i don't know if you really mc mc power <laughs> sure no, i mean it wasn't, it wasn't like the most fancy move right but with how they explained it it's like they're saying how not yeah, very not few can not do me is like the only one he, he has the, the world the record for having the most black flash and of course Usually yep. somehow Usually gets like it. he gets yeah. like he gets to do it this time. So it's like I don't know what's about it, that. Four or three? It's four. Four. It's four. It was four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But the, thing that confused, three, but... but the thing that confused me is is like how is Nanami only like tier one or whatever? How's it not tier S when he's the world record holder for yeah. like consecutive black flashes? If I it's mean, that hard, you know? Maybe it's maybe there's either there's yeah. either more to be um, or or he might be held back. Because it might be just more of a title we, than like your actual. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, I just think like it's a matter of like you know internal politics of how they rank people, like mm-hmm. how they rank like who is it like Mai or May, one of the two sisters. How was they it, like rank her so low because she left the. Was clan it Ma- Maki? It's Maki's the one that doesn't have that can't see right. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's Maki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, so it's like Brian yeah, said, Maki. like their actual rankings don't reflect what they truly yeah. are due to just this inner politics of like, so like yeah, you did something higher, that we don't agree but, with. So yeah. we're gonna put this like glass ceiling on you that you can't yeah. break through. Yeah. Yep. Um no, Toto, again, as all you guys said, like absolute badass, raising to the ranks and like top characters of all time. Um so I I, I loved every moment of him in this episode. The thing that was probably my low point for this episode was as badass as it was <laughs> is Gojo coming in and just doing Gojo God like work <laughs> of just breaking the entire veil, breaking all of the limbs of the guy that uh, was wanted to turn him into a coat rack. That was fighting the, uh, the older uh, I mean, principal so the guy of the school. I, I can understand that because these were strong, but they didn't really explain how he, Jesus, my bad. Amber alert! Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Got shit going down over there in the yeah. Yeah. Midwest. Yes. Okay. So ignoring <laughs> the Amber alert. Um. So, but the the, the break, like getting rid of the was it the butcher guy? That's one thing because I can see the power difference. But they didn't really explain how he got rid of the veil unless he's that much stronger. I, I guess whoever made the veil in the first place, he's that much stronger. He can break a veil that's supposed to specifically keep him out. Yeah. yeah. Again, I think this is just another like amazing show of a ceiling of power because Joe he's just so strong he can just break a veil, dude. Like just eat like instantly. It's like he doesn't even need to try and he does it. It's just, I mean, it's just... yeah. I mean, I'm no, still assuming he, he, line. Yeah, I'm. I'm assuming he he probably had to like prep something or basically like and take some time because I think he would have done it from the beginning. Right. I would have because uh, I would have assumed at least. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm also kind of salty in the sense that I feel like 
Gojo's just OP abilities and kind of where he stands and what we've seen so far. Um, he almost act as plot armor for Toto and Yuji in the fight yeah. with Hanami. Because if you remember, literally right before he breaks the veil, Hanami reveals like what her uh, flower is on her arm. And she's about to use like a fucking like super like solar, solar beam, beam Pokemon yeah. style like domain <laughs> technique. Basically. And it's just, like, oh shit, like, okay, somebody ain't making it out of this. And then, of course, Gojo comes in and, you know, yeah. just saves the day. Hold on, you you really think my boy Toto could not like avoid that or or like survive that? Sorry, he could probably avoid it now. You know, seeing the power of that boogie woogie, boogie like, woogie, yeah, he's, he's now safe. <laughs> but I, I can't help but feel like now it's just like in terms of characters actually dying. Like in my mind now, the only way a character is going to die now is if Gojo ain't there to save the day and just do his thing. Uh, yeah, true. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's how often he's going to be around there, though. You know. I mean, that's what I hope, but I mean, yeah. look at the two times that we got close to a character dying who shows up and, you know, stops yeah, that from happening. <laughs> it's Gojo. Yeah. Well, Setsuna did help out once by, you know. Oh, true. But, but see, that's the thing. I view Gojo and uh, Sukuna as, like, the same, like, from both sides of the coin, like, you know, from the Jiu-Jitsu uh, sorcerer side and then from the curse user, like, Gojo and Sukuna are, like, almost equal in the regards of, like, the powers that we've seen from them. Even true. though I know they're probably not, but... No, that's at least all about. I can do yeah. with the information that we have. Yeah, yeah. it seems. It seems. It seems like the like the characters are getting bailed out basically instead of suffering the consequences. Yeah, yeah. little plot armor. Yeah. Yep. And then we saw that one uh, blonde-haired curse user that was really Which happy to nothing. be fighting a bunch of girls, and they did nothing. He's just like, "Oh, gotta go." Joe's here. That like I'm fucking that, with that. That part was uh, really random. They just <laughs> introduced him, and he's just out of there. I mean, I can't see that guy being like a. I can see him fighting like a like a very bottom tier character that, that doesn't really matter too much. You mean yeah. the girls? Yeah, it's probably going to happen again. Um, be rematch I would sure. say yeah. I would say girls. I, I would just see, consider like bottom tier characters, whoever that would be. Okay, not uh, not trying to be uh, like sexist the, or anything, but the fact that he was about to fight like the three girls, I'd assume that they're going to have a rematch later on. Oh, but that, yeah, that, well, that one chick that I mean, she's got to be top tier. I don't even know we know we know any of her abilities yet, but I'm sure she's. She's you know, pretty OP. Oh, the one teacher. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm assuming oh, yeah. that she's probably pretty strong. So honestly, I think I think he would have got yeah. the ship. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Pretty easy. I'm kind of sad too that the uh older principal who does like the guitar abilities, like we didn't see anything from him really. Oh, he uses his body as an that. amp. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I'm just it. like, I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, I yeah. thought we were going to get to see them to fight a little bit, but it's like, nah. Dude, you got to save it for later in the show. You can't just, uh, you know. Th- I guess, yeah. So maybe out. that's the thing. I uh, <laughs> I know there's probably still a lot of the show. I think I was reading an article yesterday that the author said that if everything goes to plan, like, um, Jujutsu Kaisen from the manga format should last for two more years. Okay. I thought you were going to move on to his next. situation. So. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I'd no, be able to kill the One Piece. Okay. Nah, he put, a, he put a two year limit on it. If everything kind of goes to what he thinks right now i, I think it'll be fine yeah, i mean i think with all this sh- uh with all the shows dropping from shonen jump i mean i think i, I watched like another youtube video where I, I think like with the current shows like if they're all done and out of the shonen like it's going to move up to like number three like it's it's basically like a, it, like just from the anime like standpoint like it boosted like manga sales like crazy yeah yeah i, I mean it's, it's, I mean, I'm it fine definitely des- yeah, it deserves to do so yeah. and if you know it's doing all the things right when it comes to kind of keeping shonen trope but breaking the mold also yeah, in the same yeah. regard it'd be awesome for more episodes but i mean we'll i mean it, it'll probably take some time considering it's mappa dude i don't know i like i'm pretty like disappointed in, like how they just ended the the fight between total yuji and like Kanami. like yeah mm-hmm. i can do that now we're gonna move on with the with the like school festival or whatever and then they're gonna play baseball next like it was, yeah. it was oh, so I, awesome. I forgot about that it was so oh. awesome and you're about to get like there's all these potential like hype battles right like oh, oh that principal ugm like toto right and then like fucking gojo oh. just had to come in and, like no party's <laughs> over kids <laughs> we gotta do this festival you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. the only thing I'm disappointed about with this it's whole just show. Teasing. Oh, it's just teasing, right yeah. yeah, it's just teasing. So if yeah. you look at, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I, I totally agree with Ku, but if you look at like the Shonen perspective, it's like this. I feel like this is just more another. I guess I mean we already had more fights like with the the patch the patch guy, patchy guy, but like, oh yeah, yeah. Like, I guess I guess this is still like more considered of a warm up. Like when we're finally seeing more of the backstories, and then we see. We're slowly trying to get used to the characters, so I hope this is like again a warm up for later fights. Maybe they'll have like have better, like more sex inclusions for, for like 
like longer like arcs like this so yeah but, oh, we'll sure. i know that's a good point that you bring up that makes me think that like this current group of curse users that we've seen since the beginning like they're gonna be probably the main bad guys for a while in terms of like kind of the oh, pacing yeah. that they're going at yeah. yeah it seems like it for sure oh they're all still alive and we're what 20 some episodes in yeah <laughs> Yeah, so much for that uh, Toto dying uh, aspect. Oh, so no, I'm, I'm glad that didn't happen. Um, but... I didn't think, I didn't think Toto's good. I still, I think, I still think that Gojo could be like the Kamiya later on. Like, I think because he's too strong, like they had to, they had to sacrifice him. Yeah. And make, make it, uh, That's what impact. I'm thinking as well. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, the man is just too damn strong. Yeah, so that's why. Yeah. I, then that, then like all like then like you'll finally get like the tension of like you can't have Gojo save you anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's just my. Prediction. I will say though, the animation on his uh, purple hollow technique or whatever they saw. Oh man, thing of beauty as always. <laughs> they give him all the animation budget. <laughs> well, well, I'm like half the, animation, half the budget goes into his eyes. Well, I mean, yeah. Maki, Maki oh, right, yeah. the cool ones from a couple episodes ago. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I mean, hope. I, mean, yeah, I think that's it. I can't yeah. see. Oh, yeah, I don't know like how much we're gonna we're... talk about next week. Oh yeah. yeah just I mean, I'm, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it'll still be great with the really strong, you know, personalities that everybody has in this. Oh, I think series, it'll be hilarious. So. Like it'll, it'll be, be it'll be fun. It'll be it'll be, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be the comedy break because I know Stratton always says yeah. he needs like his comedy breaks yeah. in between like the, the fighting like, arcs. The jujitsu comedy is so good. It's like it hasn't really missed at all. It's like, pretty spot on. Yeah, like this is definitely one of my one of my shows. Like for shonen comedy, it's 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 up there. What if they like? Um, what if they like reference more like baseball movies? What if they reference Sandlot next next week? That'd be awesome. If they, I wouldn't know. I never saw it. Oh I, God, I'm right. not a fan of baseball, so Kill, I, I, everything's balls. gonna fly over my head. Oh God! I, hope, I don't know. It's a. We it's, shall see. Do you guys feel like we're gonna get any more of like a, like an actual arc, or do you think it's just gonna be setting stuff up at this point? Probably. Like I think we have like, what, four probably setting, setting stuff up. It's gonna up. be like maybe a sm- a small tease of like, yo, you know, this group took sakuna's finger from us like okay what are we yeah. gonna do yeah i think there's only four episodes left and yeah. well three if you take out the baseball well, actually, the, 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 I, I don't actually the probably they still need to show if like hanami lived or not i i'm sure she's still alive but we'll oh, see still alive. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. Sure. Uh, there's no okay. way that she's gonna tease her like solar beam domain technique and we don't get to okay. see it that'll be the yeah. biggest yeah. Okay. Balls, like, so i guess we're all gonna assume she's still alive then yeah so i guess yeah there's uh, no way i don't uh, yeah, so I don't know who was gonna be the next villain in the arc. Maybe it'll be like, the actual main bad guy that they've been teasing all this time. So yeah, right. Ayami again, maybe, or that volcano dude. You know, we have a couple. But we've seen all of them already, <laughs> so like, he's like the only one that hasn't fought yet. So but they gotta die yeah. at some point, right? They can't just keep running away. I uh, showed it, man. Mm. Yeah, God. Let's anyway. hope. Anyway, so. I'm good. All right, so let's give it for Jutsu Kaisen. Then we went to our, our next show, Mushoku Tensei. And uh, Stray, you want yeah. to give shout out to our, uh, all the comments? Also, I practiced this at the beginning, yeah. so we'll make another, right at the end, we'll make another separate thing for shout outs to when you can cut that and put the beginning. Yeah, I uh, just want to thank like some of the new comments we received this last week. Uh, uh, Nikhil, Philip, Christ- uh, Christopher, Summer Jazz, Jeffrey, Mihan, No Name, and Senor Fri- Friol. Which means bean. I looked it up just to make sure I wasn't saying anything bad. You didn't ask so hard. And then, uh, and then also to it. our returning comments, uh, you really uh, Sonic Cam, Albert, Doctor Sonic Spear, and Code Number Twelve. Thank you guys for continuing yeah, to support us weekly. That is awesome, and uh, hopefully uh, we can keep improving from here. Yeah. So that's it. So this week again, more foreshadowing, but like so much things happened in like the last half. So I just want to focus on the first yeah. half first. Because yeah, um, I have a lot of things. Okay, wait, wait. Time. Before we go on to that, okay, I really have to give a shout out to the production staff of this show, Egg simply firm. because just the how they do the OP is so well done. Is there really I an can't op- get over it. it. Every yes, every single yeah. episode, they don't give it's... you a standalone like minute and a half cinematic of what's going yep. to happen. They mm-hmm. legit give you experience of what the world building is what's around what it looks like and it just pants everywhere across like where they're at and i i can't get enough of it because it's just amazing there's no spoilers it just gives you the world and just expands and it's like it's amazing i love it the opening's like kind of a part of like what we're currently seeing too so no it totally it totally is like this episode with like it's such a small thing but the fact that you know the town that they're in showing kind of it's raining and what people are doing in the rain like 
exactly as Brian said, like it's something that just adds so much more flavor to the series rather than a, you know, 90 second kind of ad break, if you will, that we get every week with like normal openings of just the same thing. Yes. It's just more okay. to see and actually, more. It's a better it's just, usage of the the time. Okay, the actually, every I, every week too. I actually actually noticed that. I just noticed the the song playing. I didn't actually know about the panning. I mean, so. the, the song is it's an absolute fair. banger as well. So the song is awesome. It yeah, definitely no, the song is cool though. The song is yeah, really cool. So, um, so started off. So last week I kept saying like I was waiting for the time skip. Technically, we had a mini uh, time skip yeah, because we had two oh, years. We, never, yeah, we, never had, we had two years. Had two years. Oh, calm <laughs> down, bro. Enjoy it, man. Yeah. No, I'm not saying double like enjoy the I'm just process. Saying, no, I'm just saying like I didn't. He's never double I didn't know how the go with the pacing, but we're, technically we're, it's a, going little by little. So we got two years, and then um. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of details. Part from previous episode where, where I mean, Ares is becoming a beast with the sword. Yeah, yeah, I think he's so. advanced level now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's level, that's level, yeah. Yeah, we forgot to mention that last week, but then it even like showed it more again this like this week about how much like how much more she's like. Well, yeah, and you can just see perfect. it in her fights with Galen, oh, yeah. like how much more yeah. advanced it's getting. Yeah. So. It's intense. Sorry, Brian, Ooh. I cut you off. Hmm. Brian? Yeah, I <laughs> think she's on the same level as Paul. For sword level, yeah. So what? That just goes to show mm. this girl is legit a sword prodigy. She's definitely evolving quickly. I think Paul maybe. I have to go back. You might be right, but I want to say he's maybe one higher, but oh. I could be wrong. Oh, okay. He's advanced in all yeah. three. Yeah, she's. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's the three, three sword yeah. styles. Because I think because yeah, yeah, right. Galen, one. I think she's only the sword god style, right? Or which I forgot which style. But she's only one. I think a master, master of the one. Yeah, yeah. Sword yeah. God. yeah, yeah. Advanced sword god. Sword god. Hmm. Yeah. So. Which, damn. We, and yeah, if if it is equal level, then that's crazy. Yeah, Eris is. She's only twelve. Nuts. Yeah. She's yeah, the uh, sword version of Rudy with magic. <laughs> another child prodigy. Yeah. And then I just thought I mentioned about like how um was it they mentioned about like more about the family the, the family politics how um like so Paul's family who's from what Norris or Nor Norat I think it's uh the Nodo gray rats are what uh Rudis is and Paul is the Notus. No, because <laughs> no, yeah. they're they're all part of the gray rat family but like but apparently yeah, like uh, the gray rat and then there's four different like branching families. yeah so his yeah. paul's branch like they don't like they don't like i guess they, they like the black sheep of the family they don't really like them that much and then they have a brother that's ruling and the way that that uh Eris's dad was telling it sounds like he wants like he wants rudis to take over over his uncle so i'm s it sounds like like this is gonna be like, a plot point later on like like whatever after this when he's done with a kid that it sounds like uh the family politics is gonna come back and like Rudy's gotta get involved in this, like in like a family succession dispute, because they also venture to how, um, the 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 two the two brother Ares's two brothers, the older and the younger, got taken away by, mm -hmm. um, it was by uh, uh the Nora uh, brother, right? Because like, he's yeah, it's uh, by Paul's brother. He basically yeah, wants he's, to he's, have he's, like all potential gray rat heirs. So raised he's, he's like he's like he's like, he's like, he's like heir of the family, right? <laughs> yeah. Even above like Ares's dad, right? I think, I think so, so that's yeah. Why, that's that. That's I'm pretty sure Paul's family is like the main go to, like, they run that shit. Yeah, so that was, that was the like, uncle sounds like he's trash. Yeah, so that was, that was like justification for him taking away the two sons to raise them in the head of the household. So, yeah, so again, it just sounds like it's gonna, like, it's gonna come back later where, like, Rudy's gonna get involved in, like, this succession dispute with, like, probably, I don't know, I don't know the brother, if Iris' brother is gonna be involved or it's gonna be, like, with, like, um his other cousins from his brother's side. It'll happen. Yeah, it could so, be. So that's definitely like that's definitely one like foreshadowing they're putting in, and then um, yeah, there was you know, I like how oh, sorry I, I kind of have notes so just kind of like in in a row from like the episodes. Like mm -hmm. I, I thought like Eris's mom like hated Paul this entire or Rudy well, this entire time, but then you actually find out that she actually doesn't <laughs> and like wants to adopt him. They, they, um, uh, mm. The dad did say she did hate him at first because like her sons got taken away, and then yeah, and then, that back that little backstory Paul's, clip was Paul's son. Intense was able to like roam here for as a freeloader so she did hate him for a little bit but i think slowly she started to yeah to i kind of didn't him. like that i kind of wanted them to keep it as like that hate because i think i said really? like last week like they're continually focusing on hilda like not liking rudy being there and then to david's point this episode we learned well she doesn't like him being there because her sons got taken away but here's rudy that just kind of gets to do whatever the heck he wants to do with his life you know I'm, I'm, and then all of a sudden she's just like oh because my daughter you know likes you and because of all these other reasons like oh i really like you 
It's like I think I think, I think that's I'm fine with it cool. just because it seems like because it seems like everybody else in that family they they they, they can't stand they hate them. So it's like at the same time it's nice like where they're I guess they're not blaming a child because they really don't have like I, I mean he's been there for how many years now like, what, like at least how three old years he... now I think he yeah was... okay. well actually a little yeah, over two yeah. years well I, I, I think it was seven when he when he first joined and I think he celebrated his tenth birthday so I'll just yeah. I think it's because also the time skip that we don't really see more of the development with her accepting that's true so I think I think yeah, it's yeah, it the, has the, been a long time the time so. skip yeah, basically that's true. like very true up. very true. Yeah, so I actually kind of like because uh, first, like in my notes, I'm like, man, why is this, why is she being such a bitch? And then like the whole like whole thing where they're they're like pulling her out of there, and then they yeah. they give like a little backstory about it. I was like, oh damn. I was like, okay, I'm fine with her. She's cool. Um, yeah, guys, so very we're, fair. Guys, I don't really get what I don't really get what flipped the switch though. Like, what made her also just love right? Guys. That's that's what that's I don't what get. we're missing. Oh, I think that's the, the little skip that we're missing. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's, if, uh, she's if, been there for three years. If anything, from what I can sort of tell, is like she already had two of her sons like sort of leave, and mm-hmm. over like the three years that like he stayed there, she sort of like adopted him in as like a sort of son figure. So That's she wants another son. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, think she just it... wants a son. And so yeah, and it's like away, you said, so. she probably realized like I can spend all this time, you know, having my chip on my shoulder, or I can, you know, bring in this son that is still, you know, family blood at the end of the day, and just kind of. Let bygones be bygones and work it for the best rather than just being negative. Right. Dude, I, I got debated a little bit though, because when uh Rudy was like, Oh, like he was trying to guess a surprise, right? He was like, Oh, my parents coming, and then everyone was kind of silent, like uh yeah. was kinda, like tearing up. And then all That's of a sudden came up like, yo, we're, we'll adopt you, you know, like you be my son now. And then I was like, wait, wait, wait. Are we just like skipping over the fact that that maybe Paul and like like Rudis' family is dead, you know. Like, is that is that what's going on here? Yeah, I, I thought that would happen yeah. too. And then, and then, luckily, Paul's still alive. They show well, up later. Yeah, that later. Yeah, another yeah. piece stuff there. Yeah, that's yeah. Sec- uh, more of the second half. But I guess I mean, there's something yeah. I really want. Besides, besides, like, so, like, I felt like the whole thing of like, um, the whole family politics and like the mom's important. And then, but then, the horse is Rudy being more of a pedo. So there's always that. Sure. Wait, yeah. Before it's, that, it's, 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 I just want to give a real big shout out to the granddad because oh no, okay. the granddad was hilarious too. This man was like, <laughs> I just want to get rid of the head of the notice family, put Rudis in charge. I was like, hell yeah, free <laughs> that, that was hella Rudis. funny how they had to drag him from the party and then they had to drag the yeah, mom yeah, Hilda yeah, from the yeah, party as well. Great. That was but well I'll, done. Like he loves I love Rudy. <laughs> Just yeah, like, let's kill this part. other guy. Put him. <laughs> the last oh. part of the the first half of the episode that I also have to call out is uh. The peak into Galane's uh, great buns of steel. Yeah, I was, gonna <laughs> say, like, I was gonna say we are nine, ten minutes in, and we have not talked about that ass. And uh, <laughs> oh, whoa, I wasn't whoa, gonna, whoa. I wasn't gonna <laughs> let that ass go, Fred. No, you weren't. I had it up here. I was like, okay, we got this, we got this, but like Galane's ass. Yeah, yeah I, <laughs> I first paused it. I'm like, wait, and I, I was trying to like see like how, and then he, and then you find out that it's basically just. It's just like steel. I'm like, this like, is pure muscle. muscle. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thought like degenerates. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you say, sir? So, I honestly, I don't know if I have anything else to say about that. <laughs> I know. I just accepted all of the fans. I just wanted to bring show. it up. Like, I was just interested because I knew right away when Rudy showed her his figurine. He's like, oh, but there's one part I don't yet understand. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Here, yeah. here we go. And, and it was, I, I like this better than all of the other kind of like pedo over erotic stuff that they do like this even though admittedly still erotic in some sense it was much more comedic focus of you know of course galane just has buns of steel where it's you know there's not much ass there it's literally just muscle (laughs) and and galane is of age i'm i'm assuming yes 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 i would hope so in bc years maybe you know it gets multiplied (laughs) she's not man child no (laughs) yeah that that too that too it's uh let's see what else um Dude, uh, his his new staff is pretty sick. I actually like the name of it. Aqua I don't know Hartia. why they didn't like it. I don't know yeah, uh, Aqua Hardius. I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. It fit the look of it. It's blue. Oh yeah, that's that's keep it right. It's blue. Mm. Yes, but the, but that like this like uh that was just like how like what they showed of his power though just from that thing just was insane. Yeah, the amplification. He just got a huge upgrade yeah. just because of, like so now we found out like how much the staff matters in amplifying one's yep. abilities. 
I mean, I mean they, you, mentioned, they you, mentioned that before. You can that so up in RPGs in general, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, they yeah, mentioned, I suppose. They mentioned but, the magic system, too. Of like, and yeah, stuff like yeah. him giving the wands to that's true, Aerith that's true. and and Roxy yeah. giving so, him so his first So I'm not surprised that they gave him a huge upgrade, yeah. 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 But, um, before we get to kind of like to the, the last part of the episode, uh, there was one more thing I wanted to bring up. Um, Do we want to take that one guy's, like, talk about a coup? Like, serious? Was he legit, or... Wait, which guy? The... Philip? <sighs> Philip, yeah, yeah, Philip. Like, was yeah. he like um, telling the truth? Was he about the family? Debating? Like, like, like he was, was he trying to bait him? Like, what, I feel like, like it's he was pretty like honest about it. Wait, like okay, it he was honest about basically starting a coup. Okay, I just yeah, 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 I think he's just like, yo, Rudy, I want to use you as a tool. Like, yeah, you cool Trent, with that? Rudy's trying to like, yeah, about the family. Like, he wants maybe. to take down the the older brother. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What, that's what I was mentioning earlier. How like I think yeah, it's setting I suppose, up like. It's setting up like yeah. a future plot point where he probably will call on Rudy later. Oh yeah, it makes it sense because it sounds like he's absolute garbage. But that, so, but that's what we were talking about earlier. So, yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. you want, anything you want to add or? No, I basically I, okay. I just I didn't know the guy's name, Philip. Okay, yeah, because we already met, we already <laughs> that, that, that helps me. Just <laughs> Philip. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how I didn't remember that. I name. just think <laughs> I don't know. Never mind. Okay, uh, so <laughs> that's that's the first half. We gotta talk about that last half though, where like, so many fucking things oh, happen. Man. Yeah, and, like, it. hold on. I just want to say, first, like, you only see like two ish monsters, and I love the design so far. The dragon design, pretty fucking dope, and like the wild wolf design for the, like the two monsters that we see, also pretty fucking 100%. dope. And then you see like oh, the, the hero, the hero in the history books. He shows up, so he's a real person. And he's oh, yeah. dead or anything. That was pretty dope. This dragon looking dude, that guy was pretty dope. Literally everything but, they showed is pretty but, fucking but dope. Glenn, what were your thoughts on Kirishikaya? Kishi Just look up her name, dude. <laughs> yeah. What? What were your thoughts on that little demon girl? Kishikia Kishi I can't. I could uh, ask whatever. She'll probably be important later. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> awful design. Like I, I, when I saw this, yeah. I was like, "Oh my god!" Out it, of it, all it, the it, things that fit in the show and everything being so well tied to you know the time and everything, and then you just get well, the lolly demon girl like these with new... a complete <laughs> unique art style as well. And it's just yeah. like, well, I see new... why this is Isekai again. Well, you, you bring me back to <laughs> all these villains look so intense. Like I mean, she just looks like almost comedic relief in a sense. Cause yeah. like that, the new dude that I was like like talking to the dragon, where it's just like, damn, like this guy looks intense. Yeah, how do you go and from that guy to this? To this? Exactly. Yeah, and then it cut to this guy or this this girl. I'm like thinking, what? What just happened? And then, um, but you know, but the whole thing with like the floating castle and basically like uh, where we think that where was it the the lord like the lord uh, who is, is, still, is still alive somehow. And but yeah, like, I was gonna ask, do we know how long ago the events were from? Was it like 300 LaPlace? years or something? The, yeah, it was like 300 or 400 years, right? 400. So that was yeah. obviously like some, yeah, they yeah. some like aging, like though. magic or something. Yeah, yeah but dude, the, but the lightning flash guy, that, that guy was sick too. Oh, yeah, Brian, Brian sorry, you take, take your point. I was trying to get up to that. Um, Very good. Yeah, but no, it's yeah. awesome. But I'm just, I'm just saying, like, man, like, because okay, you, you guys were enjoying this slow pace, like it was nice, and we're getting more and more details, and then all of a sudden, just like all these important things happen in this last like fifteen minutes, like they yeah, ramped up real yeah, quick. You gave it. You oh, that's just, just dude, awesome. <laughs> I didn't want this. All right, I didn't want like no, honestly, all of this rush at the last, the last half. Like, oh, no. yeah, no, I would say it was like in the last like few minutes. Uh, fifteen minutes is way too much. Um, well, but, guys, no, what's called the turning point? So. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. I, know, I thought like the whole thing, like it's still like I have no idea what to expect. Like it, like every episode, like it, like one, no idea this was gonna happen. We See, found out what the red ball was. Do we yeah. really though? Did we? Yeah, I thought it was basically the the thing for the, the it was like the seal for the demon god Laplus. No, no, it's uh, oh, I just thought oh, that they mentioned that? it that they were like, oh, is this like a resurrection of Laplus? But they I just really... thought they were kept on saying it was like a collection of mana. No, it is. But oh, I heard no, that, like, a, you, you, like a seal almost for it. The, it's it. The, oh, that the, would, that the would spell, make sense. Yeah. The spell. Yeah. It, no, I think they're saying the spell is being used to break the seal on because the the castle in the sky is lapless, and so the spell is being used to undo the seal. We don't really know what the spell is yet. I don't yeah. think they mentioned it. I just thought there's like everybody like, yo, what the hell is all this yeah, collection I don't think, of I don't like, like what the spell mana is going yet. on? I don't know what the spell is. No, I'm talking about the, then, the flying ball, like the red ball. Yeah, no, that's what we're talking about. That's a spell. Oh. Yeah, and the Laplace is the uh, castle. So, but it's interesting because the uh, servant of Paragius, when he arrives and fights Galane, he specifically says like it's emanating from Rudy, or like there's some connection between the sphere and Rudy, because he wants to mm. kill Rudy when he first shows up. 
Like mm-hmm. that's his whole prerogative. And Ghislaine's like, yeah, that's that's Either not there, him. They, they just have no clue. They might be just terrified of whatever comes next, and they just assume that there was nothing else there. And then he did get ordered to basically kill whoever's there. Yeah, anyone Good. suspicious? Yeah, I don't know. we yeah. have to go back. It seemed like he targeted just Rudy. I don't, I don't think he was there to yeah, kill anyone was. else. Yeah, but I think it's, it's just literally like, like, hey, this kid has something tied to this mana. Like, I need to kill him. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And he's I like, don't... okay, if you if you a sword king, Galen, that is, if you like vouch for him, then he said, okay, I'll let it like go for now. Yeah, yeah, like, dude, Galen is such a badass character, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. she just stated her name and her rank, and then this, this guy was like. All right, respect. Oh, yeah, he's like, I'll, I was I'll like back oh off. my god! <laughs> this guy literally came in like Minato from Naruto, just you know, like flash of lightning yep. all over the place, and then he's just like, oh, Glane, word. All right, we're good. Yeah, Later. I was like, and oh, lightning my. bolts out of there. Yeah. For real, dude. Such a good character. Yeah, all of a sudden, like, yeah, basically, like how David said, like, it, like a bunch of stuff. Just, like, this is the first time, like, in the show where it's just like, oh god, like, you know, like it's basically it's like, a bunch of things now are out are out there. Want, this is not what I want. I didn't want everything to be dumped like this. And Tizzle was saying it wasn't for a time skip. But it's like, I didn't, I didn't want want it. Like, I thought because like the way they're going, they're slowly like, keep doing it slowly, like, like slowly bring out more details. I didn't want to like dump it all on us at the last like yeah. 10 minutes here yeah. so but you want oh, a time skip. Oh. you should have specified sir now now look what we got <laughs> God yeah oh it's my fault you kept vouching for a time skip you know what you just said time skip time skip time skip now now we got to give them credit though i am glad that it didn't just jump from like paragius and uh his servant uh, Amalfi, I think his name, or something. Amalfi, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that they showed everybody else's experience in the world, where like you had the scene with like Paul and Zenith and everybody coming out into their yard and being oh, like, "Yo, what the what fuck I is want. that happening?" And day. then I'm glad like they showed the guy walking on the mountain with the dragon. And he's like, "Yo, what the fuck is that?" They could have just very well been like, "All right, skip straight to Rudy's perspective." But I'm glad they showed like all these different individuals in the world that are all like, "Oh shit!" Like, what the fuck is happening? Like, so because because Eris did mention too, how they want to bring. The family, but they said like monsters were um acting up, and then they they, they showed Paul like like fighting the monsters. But I have this yeah. really bad feeling that Paul is just gonna die like in like the monster, the monster uprising. Like it's just this bad nah, feeling. Dude, he can't. Um, Paul's too badass to die. Like that, I, I feel like whatever is gonna be the main focus is gonna be like that blue light that like, they're. I yeah, what, assuming either what do you think that or... blue light's gonna do? You think they're gonna be brought to some location? I, I thought so. they're like literally getting warped somewhere. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Because it's not gonna eradicate them, obviously. Because then they just no. I remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's <brought Rudy. laughs> yeah, I forgot Rudy. It's just like Eris. No, and they just get wiped down. It's like all right. <laughs> no, I forgot who it was. Plot but, twist. <laughs> but one of the one of the characters did mention something about like the mana seems like it was like summoning mana. So maybe it was like a teleportation spell. Like whatever that blue light was. Yeah, I need to go Maybe. back and check. Yeah, if, yeah, I thought it was first like some giant like obliteration spell when I fr- and I saw Glenn <laughs> going, I was like, oh my god, motherfucker! But then I saw the other guys going, yep. I was like, okay, we should be safe. Right. I, it's kind of funny because like Glenn, you know, is obviously trying to like protect Rudy and Eris from this happening, and then Rudy's just like Eris, oh no! But if you watch it, like Rudy does nothing to try to like protect Eris. Like he doesn't put his body in front of her or anything. He's just like, oh, he's okay. trying to really yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. He just leaves her. He's just like Eris, gotta go. No, I mean, at, the, at, the, at the last second, he did run back. I think. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. He did. Wait, five like seconds. Her, Double check. Yes, he yeah, did come back and cover yeah. her. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, the, We're good. The, the initial. Part, I, I must have spaced out on that then. <laughs> oh, no, the, initial, well, the initial part, he did run away, <laughs> and you're like, wait. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he did yeah. cover her. She, like, like, woman, when I say run, you run. But yeah, <laughs> I, I guess she did. But it's very so. fitting. The Rudy's just like every man for himself. Like, we gotta get out of here. Right. Yeah. Which is too bad, cause which is too bad, cause I think like Rudy with his like spells, he could go a little quicker. And of course, like she seems like she can use like some sort of like a. Um, I mean, she's a advanced. But at the same time, like, you don't know what is but happening. It's a like, huge, it's basically just like a whole... slide of magic, though. So she can't really. That's yeah, going really fast. There's nothing they can, they can do. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, it's. Uh... I'm sure they're fine. They'll be all right. Oh well, yeah, I mean yeah, I, yeah. I think so too. But no, yeah, like the whole thing is just like it's all of a sudden just a like, damn. And I still, again, no idea what's coming next, <laughs> no clue. Yeah, I love yeah. that show. The, uh, yeah, it's so, it's uh, very, the very last, good. The last thing I'll say, like this episode was called Turning Point, but then the next episode is called like what, like Chance Encounter or whatever. It wasn't called Turning. Yeah, Point it's two, a different so. title. Yeah, I, know, I noticed that. that so. Oh I also God. wonder, and, and I don't know if this is me reading too much into the small details, but um, when they focus back on zenith and the maid like in showing you know norn and then 
I forget the other girl's name, Aisha, showing like kind of their respective like grow ups and everything. But then they talked about Sylvie as well and how she carved a pendant or like a oh, yeah, amulet for that... Rudy. So I'm interested to see how that will tie looks... into because then Zenith again said, oh, like, you know, Sylvie looks more and more like a superb, but she just doesn't have the red gem. It yeah, looks too so. important to ignore the way it was designed. Like it looks so detailed. Yeah. yeah. It looks similar and I know it's not the same one, but I noticed when Rudy had his shirt off, he has a similar like green dragon pendant. I don't know, did he did they ever show him getting that didn't from like Holland? I don't think Are so, you... no. I thought didn't he get okay. one of the pendants from Roxy or I don't remember. I don't know. I'll have to go yeah. back, but like there's one scene in this episode okay. where he's like laying and he doesn't have a sh- it might be when they do kind of yeah, a Peter no, no, stuff I know, to I know, get, yeah. I know what you're talking about when he goes you get shirtless. To see, yeah. Tizzle yeah, says he has a uh, green like necklace. Yeah, Tizzle says it's from Roxy. It's from Roxy. Okay. 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 Yep. Yeah. Did did in this? I know they talked or showed a little bit about oh, Roxy, man. but she didn't see the mana ball, did she? They just she's had like not, the one liner where the kid was just like, she saw what was see. going on too. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. She saw what was going on. She saw the direction, but I don't okay. know if she saw the mana ball at all. Okay. Also, I think we all know what's in that chest for uh, for Rudy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, the holy relic the has holy a tower yes. laser made name. <laughs> yes. Oh uh, yeah. Good old relic. Yes. <laughs> yes. Rudy's number one treasure. Yes. Yes. It did. Dude, it still saw that. Ooh, game over, man. No more relationship. I mean, re- like you said, Ku, respect to the maid of just being an absolute homie and just being like, all right, <laughs> bro, for real, you know? I'm, like, I'm holding this down. It's like, yeah, uh, it's, it's been three years and you made a special box for Roxy's panties. Like, all right. All right. <laughs> cool. So far, we have a love triangle. We have Rudy, uh, Sylphie, and Ares. Well, I'm pretty sure they're going to put yeah, Roxy I, in later, uh, too. We don't have, they oh, yeah, we'll her. have a harm later. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. that'll all come to a point. Yeah, dude, we've been informed. I don't, I don't know, like, what's going to happen, though, because, like, dude, like, dude, you like, know, Rudy, wa- Rudy wants that harem, right? He wants that possibility. Yeah. He's got self to think about. And then, like, he just, like, worships Roxy. So, yeah. like, unless he, I can't imagine them, him, like, marrying all three. But if he Rock does, number one. He's like, dude, yeah, Roxy's got to be, no, there's really Roxy's no chance. be the number one wife, right? It, it just but, feels too much like a, like a master, like, student thing, though. Probably. Um, but but I mean, Krishi Kiak or whatever, Krishiu, whatever her name is, I'm she seems to, like she has like the let's just design. call her demon. We're just gonna call her Demon Lolly. We don't okay, need Demon it. Lolly. All right, Demon oh, Lolly. Like, like even like with her look. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I wrote it down. I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce it. But anyway, um, it, she she just has a character design. Like it seems like comedy relief and just like a way. Like she's, she would she, of all the characters, she seems like the one that would go to their side at some point. She's just she reminds me so <laughs> much of Milam from the slime slime Tensei show. Yeah. Same. What? Just Not like, even, she, dude. She just reminds me of like a character from Fake Grand Order. Twin tail, like almost like pink magenta hair. No, she she reminds me. She reminds me of of a character from that uh, Dragon Maid anime series. Uh, Who? What? Kobayashi Dragon Maid. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Like, like she's like a little girl. Yeah, the, I don't, mm. I don't see it at all. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna have to disagree. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know, but that's that's what reminded me. I of don't it. see that. Yeah. Anyways, I think we can all agree that she is very unique, and it'll be quite interesting to see how she yes settles and in this yeah. environment somehow. Yeah. She doesn't look like she belongs here. Like yeah, she definitely no, she, no, she kind yeah. somewhere. She got yeah. as well. It's yeah. an isekai within an isekai. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I think I'm. Yeah, we're 25 yeah. minutes in. I'm good. Wow, <laughs> yeah. way to keep track. Also, me. fun fact. Yeah. Uh, Overhaul's voice actor is the same as the dragon guy. Dragon, yeah, that's how you know oh, it. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 also the, that's also Nanami from Jujutsu Kaisen as well. So. Oh, yeah. Gon Kamui, dude, he's in a bunch of stuff. Yep. Mm. He's his main yeah. character in in, in, in Invaded so too. So, yeah. So. Yeah, his voice is very tough. I can I can recognize his voice pretty much. Yeah. My, my pants move a little bit when he speaks. <laughs> and on that note, okay. we're in it right there. So let's leave it for Mushoku Tensei and then move on to yes, our next thank show. You for everybody. Yeah, thank you for everybody who was uh, commenting as well in the video. And thank you, Tizzle, uh, Darren, and um, uh, Ayush as well. Thank you guys for joining us. We're going to jump right ahead to Higurashi. Oh, my goodness. So I'm going to need answers and explanations. But from the looks of it, we're not going to have any right now. I'll just say it like, man, like, I don't know like, if the show's trying hard to make it sympathize with Satoko, but like, I can't feel it. Like, everything she does, it just sounds like she's just being so spoiled, like, and just not letting Rika live her life and being so, like, so dependent on Rika. I don't know. I'm not happy with either of them. I feel like if this was that subreddit 
am I the asshole? I feel like they would both be the <laughs> both asshole. The <laughs> like, I, I really just don't care for either of them. But yeah, I would say Satoko's worse. I mean, she's the one that committed mass murder or some, instigated it or something. I mean, you know, I mean, for right now, it's just her and Rika, but that's bad enough. And as for answers, mm. I think that you'd have to watch season one, two and play the game. Uh, yeah, I don't have the time for that. Actually, I do, but I'm not going to put time into that. Work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. So, like, okay, like, I guess I'm still wondering, too, like, is this Rika? Is she the one that's like that has experienced all the, the loops already? Or is she like, are they saying like, this is still like, like a Rika that doesn't, does, didn't like loop before. That's like the only thing I really don't know. And how like, I don't know how I feel about her character. So like, Rika's looped before from okay. like seasons one and two. She's done it before. And she was like aware of it, depending on like the point in time. But um, from what I understand right now, she is, this is like before before everything basically that we've seen so far this season with her dying a bunch of times this okay. is like what preceded See, that if that's the case like i feel more sympathetic towards rika because i can understand why like she's so mm. traumatized and she wants to get out and it's like i mean look at her point i guess like i guess maybe she was like neglecting Sachiko, but I, I, just, I just feel from her point of view it's like she was so desperate to like to get out and try like to like basically like was it like forget about everything and just like focus on herself so i don't blame her for like for not like giving satsuko enough attention i just i feel like it's like she definitely i don't feel bad that she's focused more on herself so that's why i can't sympathize with satsuko yeah that's fair i mean i don't think that she's really empathizable i mean she's 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 this happens in life you have to accept that people want to do different things than you and not murder them <laughs> so i don't really find her very sympathetic at all like she's not sympathetic in my opinion. You know, I don't know, guys. Can we just agree that Satoko is kind of a bitch and uh, uh, Rika doesn't deserve any of this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This woman this woman has gone through so many loops. Let her have her high school okay, time, that's, you that's, know? Yeah. It's just like stories like these, they like, always try to find some way to like try to present like the backstory and try like to give different reviews. I'm trying to be open-minded. They're just not doing a good job right now. Of, like try That's their goal. So... I mean, I even hated then, Satoko from the beginning, so this wasn't hard for me to get on board so, with like, not I'm, liking I'm trying, her. <laughs> I'm trying to like to look at her point of view. I'm trying to be open minded, but I really can't. No, I mean, I'm I'm always down to look at it from both sides, right? But with what they're showing us, like there is no redeemable thing about Satoko at this point, right? Even from Rika's point of view, uh, in a first timeline, yeah, maybe I might lean more towards Satoko's like uh, point of view. So like Rika kind of just left her out and left her alone. But it feels like even in the first loop and the second loop of the school arc uh, or timeline or whatever, she did try somewhat. But if if the other person is not willing to put into work themselves to try to catch up, I mean, what, what can you really do as a person, right? And even with this one, before Rika and Satoko like died together, she did say that when your grades were failing or slipping, you know, I did offer you a hand, but apparently she never took that seriously enough, I guess. Um, so, yeah, you know, fuck Satoko. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, but yeah, uh, I was just really confused because it looks like, yeah, this is something that happened um, like before all the other loops that occurred in like episode one or whatever. And uh, from the looks of it, when she had her meeting with the other supernatural being in the other world, it looks like she has a different name. And I talked about it with Taylor before, but uh, if you guys remember, there was that moment where we saw Satoko's older brother in that underground like military yeah. lab or whatever. So I wonder if like Satoko's family, like or her and her brother, were actually like like experiments or something from that lab and that's what the supernatural being uh knows sotoko from or like know her as so uh that's what i was really confused about because she has this like really weird name that supposedly might have helped her uh remember who sotoko was or whatever um if i look it up i think the name was it's just like a bunch of well it sounded like a virus name actually Anomalous spinal cord specimen uh, LD3105. I thought that, wait, you're saying that's the goddess name or? No, that's what the goddess called yeah, Sotoko. Like, yeah, so I assume, yeah. I, assume, yeah, I assume it was related to like the experiment. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I don't know if that was something that came up with episode, uh, you know, the original uh, season or season two, but apparently it wasn't. It was something from either the visual novel or the game, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we did see one early episode. So they they, they show Tazuko. She get she does get like those shots from the coach slash doctor. So. Yeah, but that's more of a vaccine. Oh, it shouldn't have been anything. Well, I'm saying that. Well, I, I guess that, it, that's probably like he's a military she... doctor. Yeah, it might make more sense. So yeah. it's probably how she's related to like the experiments and prior why like the goddess calls her that or something yeah i don't know like it went from like newbie friendly to like if you don't know get the fuck out <laughs> like we don't care about you anymore you can't yeah. play detective anymore like just sit back and enjoy the show you know yeah. like you really can't try to figure out what's happening anymore i know it's yeah. the, the goddess like the way she acts it's kind of like kind of reminds me of, like the, the, the damachi gods or like like the greek gods where like they just the way she says, "Oh, I, you're just here for entertainment. Now go, go, please me." So, mm. so I don't know. and I and I, I guess like I still, I'm still thinking it's still she's still Hanyu, but like they still didn't they explain that because again they showed the scene where like, uh, but when Sato got relooped, like they still showed Hanyu with them, but like they didn't bother mm. explaining that at all. So kind of sucks. Well, it looks like they the kids forgot about Hanyu or wherever this being is because she did mention that as well. You well, know, I'm saying so. it's, it's like they show it. They like we've been showing it as the audience, but like we don't know anything about Hanyu or like why. Well, I guess like me and Ku because we're watching this from for yeah, this right, series. Right. But, like we don't know anything about like the the, the child Hanyu and why she's still with them and how. I guess mm-hmm. she just like like they never mentioned ever again after that incident. So that's right. It's it's pretty rough for you guys, really. I don't even uh, I don't even know exactly what you guys are fully comprehending anymore at this point. Like, what do you guys even really understand about like like these physical symptoms? I don't know. Of, I keep thinking it's like, so, it's it's like it's like yeah, a virus or a disease. Then like the whole goddess like time of thing is throwing me off. Like it's throwing me off. Like I I guess it's half and half, but I don't know. Like unless like unless the goddess thing is like a hallucination too, but then that doesn't explain the time loop. So. Like, uh, yeah, you, you guys, you guys have got it really rough. Like, you're just missing so many pieces. Like, I don't even understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have an idea. Like, the only um, the only that but... explains this is like supernatural, but like the show tries to make, make it sound like it's it's like science or like biology related. So, I, um, I want to say it's a mixture of both. Like, it's something that was passed on a long time ago, and they're kind of. Like the gods or the the beings that are kind of Man, like I kind, I kind the one that started all this, they're just watching it to be amused or whatever. I kind of don't like when they when stories do that, especially Japanese stories. I mean, they try to mix like both because uh because right. it, it reminds me of like Ace Attorney when like when the trials were cool, and then they had the weird like spirit medium and like, talking to the dead and all this like stuff in like a trial. They're supposed, they supposed to use logic to like figure out, but I'm like, how are you supposed to use logic like with like spirits and stuff yeah, so that was lame that was probably so, the worst part <laughs> I, <remember. laughs> I love being excited but i hated that part i remember I just, it just reminds me of that it's like I, w- I don't like it when they go half and half i want them c- to commit either all supernatural or like all like science space so i mean i don't know in the world of anime i feel like you can mix it together but or maybe if just you're trying like, to get your audience to, to follow it, you have to make it more forgiving or maybe, more simple. Maybe this is you know? the show. It's like it's just making it hard for me and Ku. I think I feel like it, like a big part of it is like it's like the uh, like what like how it takes like how the show takes itself like at the beginning like if it's really like uh, if it's really uh, kind of like Doctor Stone where it doesn't completely take itself seriously, it kind of mm-hmm. has fun with it. I think it really depends on the just like the tone that they set. Yeah, I feel like this is one of those those shows. I guess. Um, yeah. Dude, what like how psych would you guys be though if it turns out that Keiichi was also touched by like Hanyu or whoever else this this like <laughs> supernatural being is, and he's also a looper, right? Like, what if? You know, I, mean, I cool. would be crazy shocked if it was if it's been. I know, right? <laughs> But no, like, I mean, if it was Kevin, I mean but, it, you know, oh, that'd yeah. be cool. But I just feel like he's not part of the story anymore. It's just it's all like Tatsuko and Rika because they're, they're the only ones looping. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, true. But uh, there's only like so many episodes left. Uh, we're going on to part five of the uh, Satoko arc or whatever. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how the last few episodes usually go for these uh, for this show. But uh, I, I don't really see how they're going to close it out. I, I don't know either. I really don't. How many episodes um, is it? This is supposed to be part two. So this might be the last 
maybe four? I don't remember. Well, is, is that it? Like, there's no more after this? No. Uh, I don't think oh. so. Nope. I mean, okay. nothing that's been announced. Right. Because, I mean, I've been talking before about how there was, like, the, the two seasons. One with the mysteries, one with the answers. And that doesn't seem to be what they're doing here. I mean, this is a completely different flow than what I'm used to. But I don't think that's what they're going to do. Hmm. I am, however, when we do come to the last episode i can answer whatever Play questions you guys us. have because I've, I've watched the two Tell i've watched the first two seasons which is brutal I have so many episodes of an already stacked season and now i'm gonna play the game just to see what happens because now i want to know like now i'm invested i've watched so many youtube videos trying to figure out what i'm missing like i need to know Wait, is it is it like yeah. did you say ume neko is also part of it like you have to know things from ume neko as well Mm -hmm. oh, god. I think so. That's what I've heard people say. So that will be the next on my list. Oh god. Yeah, I feel, I feel like this is a show just telling you to you know, sit back, relax, stop guessing, and just enjoy the show. I mean, that's that's what I'm getting at this point. But if if KG does turn out to be one of the loopers, woohoo! What a good twist! What a good twist! Yeah. But that's all I have for this week for Higurashi. So here's hoping yeah. next week we'll have something something to like to latch on so that'd be mm -hmm. it for uh higashi for this week and then next we'll move on to hori mia oh man if you are not a fan of side characters i feel like you did not enjoy this week's episode then <laughs> probably not <laughs> um but all that said you know i i really enjoyed it i like you know seeing how um Sengoku, the president of the student body president, and uh, Remy, Remy kind of fell for one another. I thought that was, you know, really cute in that kind of backstory. And I think they did a really good job of still sprinkling in, you know, the moments with Hori and Mia and learning, like, Hori's very unique kind of, uh, not fetishes, but I guess more kinks that she <laughs> wants to explore yeah, in that relationship. <laughs> so, I don't know, it was, it, was, it was fun as always. My my approval rating of her, you know, shot up a little bit, you know. <laughs> like, ooh, girl, all right, I got you. Yeah. He's just like, step on me, Hori, please. Or step on me, Mia. Excuse me. <laughs> so, um yeah. I'm just I'm still like just a little confused on Remy's character, or at least how the anime portrays her, because like I don't because it may it may seem like she was just like such a bitch before. Now it's like, I don't know, I guess try making more like well I mean I, I mean I did like her more after this episode, so I'll give him that. But I'm just confused on what her character is supposed to be like. I don't think that she was ever supposed to be a bitch. I feel like that was almost like a red herring. Like they were just kind of like dangling her in front of us to like let us temporarily think a certain thing about her before they actually do dove into her character. Because I, I never like like that interaction where for a split second I thought it was going to be a love triangle when she came and talked to Hori. Um, about Mia and and I was like, oh god, where is this going to go? But she dropped it really quickly. I was like, oh okay, she's fine, she's I mean, cool. This isn't like, for yeah, real. That's why so. like, that that part is really confusing. Like, what was the point of that? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. I think she was just testing her, to be honest. I guess <laughs> could be, but not I mean, even I, in a bad way. Just yeah, I definitely agree though that I think Remy, from at least the anime only standpoint, definitely gets tagged or portrayed as things that she's you know obviously not. And I think this episode did a good job at kind of reiterating the fact of how even Remy went about, you know, falling for Sengoku when all the other kids are, you know, kind of swooning over her, like, oh my god, like, Remy is so hot, like, she is the it girl, and, you know, she's hearing all kind of these rumors and murmurings going on about her, but then when she hears that Sengoku's kind of like, no, she's just a regular girl, like, I don't know what you guys see, and that was the one thing that, like, really stood out to her and kind of attracted her to Sengoku in the first place, so... I think she just gets that bad rap of, you know, I mean, that, having everything that everybody wants, but it's not really her fault at the end of the day. Like, she's not perpetuating these things. That reminds me, too, of Sengoku, because, like, I remember, too, like, we just, like, like, the first time we saw him, like, it was, I like, we didn't, I, well, at least I didn't have a good, like, like, um, I didn't see his character as, like, someone, I don't know, I didn't see a good portrayal of his character. It just sounded like he was just, like, someone who's just being like just like rude to Hori and then we see later on that he's actually like really friendly as I think it gets along with everyone so I guess it's more like that I guess it was like red herring for both of them like or, mm -hmm. where like I like I did like like his the my, my image of his character like definitely changed after like he started hanging out with them so mm -hmm. definitely hmm. uh we also had the new character that got introduced this episode Akane yep. 
who has a crush on I've got everybody's names here pulled up so I can't forget Yuki <laughs> he has a crush on Yuki <laughs> um and I am really really excited I'm, I'm kind of like for I'm over the main couple and now this is the couple I'm invested in new power I, couple I, comes in <laughs> yes I love them I think they're adorable and I thought that Toru was so fucking hilarious when he came down and pretended to be Yuki's boyfriend and he's like this girl is crazy. This guy is so much hotter than me. Why is she going for him? Like, what's wrong with her? It was uh, just great. I was laughing the entire time. That was like, probably my favorite part of the whole show so far, to be honest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, yeah, that was definitely a, a good comedic kind funny. of jab yeah. to the situation. And I really enjoyed the other fact that uh, Akane is like literally blind as a bat, yeah, that was, you know, without that his glasses and stuff. And how they apply that cool. comedy into it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I, I thought it was a nice introduction, but man, I just I still wanted more of just Hori and Mia's like interactions together because I just I just couldn't get enough of it. Like I was laughing so hard when uh like Hori was giving Mia a pedicure or whatever, and then all of a sudden he just for some reason he stepped on her head and said, Oh, I thought if I stepped on you, I would love up for some reason. Like it wasn't that funny, but for me I just found it hilarious for some reason. Um I think it was just probably the execution of it. And then the fact that like you see this other side of Hori, I kind of just want more out of it maybe it's, i'm just kind of biased right but like i was i was wanting more of that uh throughout the whole episode and then the fact that they started out the episode with like a little backstory of like uh mia and, and how he felt and how he shouldn't give up and commit suicide right. and just keep living and he'll eventually find friends or people that he belongs with like i thought that was gonna be the focus of the show so yeah. it's kind of weird that they took this little sidetrack to go work with the side characters i feel like yeah so. i think it's i think it's because i feel like it's just the manga i feel like they just have so much little things go, like probably like one, mm. one one like mini like mini episodic things going on for each chapter and it's probably adapting that flow that's the way i see it yeah i totally get your standpoint though ku it's like with the limited amount of episodes that we have and you know the literal title of the show being hori mia it definitely is not concerning, but, you know, in instances where we do have episodes that focus mainly on just side character interaction, it's like, all right, well, when are we going to get, you know, that expansion of this relationship between Hori and Mia? When is, you know, something not going to go, you know, as kind of like cute and quirky as we've seen so far? Because there hopefully has to be something that kind of, you know, throws a wrench unless it's just kind of more of the same and that's what people love. So... I don't know. I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. most people like like it more the same. For me, it's like we barely get uh, rom coms where like yeah, it's focused on a couple. It's it's always about the chase and not like the relationship. So I always mm-hmm. appreciate if they like they actually show more of the relationship. But I not mean, unless you watch Tony Kawa. Yeah, that that too. Yes, but yeah. For me, I'm just I don't care about those show brings. I trust it completely now. I've loved every second of it. I, I I could whatever way it goes, I'll be happy with. I don't care who they spend time on. I've liked everything about it. And then I don't, she, I don't and know. Then, and then she'll binge the manga afterwards. Because <laughs> it's ending next month. Famous last words. <clears throat> uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, but that's, that's all I had. Yeah, yeah I, I got too. nothing else. So, Another great I mean, see, good. Mm. It's still good. So consistent as always. So looking forward to future episodes as well. All right. So that's gonna be it for uh, Horimiya for this week, and then um, we're gonna move on next to B stars, which I'm I'm assuming is still good, Ooh. still like anime of the season um, for you guys. Uh oh. Well, this episode felt a little so. flat for me just Ooh. because it was it wasn't really focused on like Legosi, right? Like the main guy or Lewis for that matter. It was more focused on uh, Juno, and then I guess like the female cast, which. You know, this might sound kind of bad, but I don't really care much for, right? Like Juno, Haru, I don't really care much for them. But uh, this is what the uh, episode was focused on. And other than like learning more about Juno's point of view and how she feels about everything, I don't really care much for this episode. So I don't know how you felt, though, Taylor. You know, I don't completely disagree with you. Like Juno, I'm I feel I feel about Juno, I think, the way that you feel about Lewis. Which is that I just feel that she's unfocused. I don't really understand what purpose she's supposed to serve. I mean, I can, I can kind of understand like she was in the running for B star, but like now she's wishy washy about that. I had no idea that before that like she'd been thinking that herbivores and carnivores should be separated. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I don't know why she feels that way. It just, I feel like everything about, I, like, the pacing of her character is just not, like, super well done. And I just don't really qu quite know how to feel about her. She just seems wishy washy. Right. Um, which I think I remember you saying that about Lewis. And Lewis, <laughs> I, I, I would agree. He's kind of portrayed that way now, too. But I just have faith that that will come around a little bit more than I have faith for Juno, I think. Uh -huh. And then Haru, um, I thought I think it's nice to see Haru again because I have no issues with her other than just like I think that her and Lugosi's relationship it's just not like something I, I care for but uh, I think she's an interesting character so I mean I was actually kind of happy to see her again and see her interactions with Juno even though those in themselves also kind of confused me because from what I remember the last time they talked to each other was when Juno was chasing Haru up those stairs when she was pissed because Lugosi when she found out Lugosi had a crush on Haru yeah. and I thought that scene, maybe I wasn't supposed to take it that way, but from that scene from the first season, like, it felt pretty dramatic. Like, if I was Haru, I'd be like, what is this bitch going to do to me? <laughs> like, it would have made me really uncomfortable. Right. And um, so I just thought that this, like, this being the next scene just felt disjointed. Mm. Unless there's something I'm missing that you can remember where they interacted. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I mean, other than the fact that Juno kind of sees what Lagosi sees in Haru now, that's yeah. all about it. Like maybe there's a little bit more closure, and the fact that she kind of re-sparked like Haru's interest in Lewis, I guess, because at the very end, which I was like, man, this fucking bitch, right? Uh, she actually was trying to make contact with Lewis, and then you know, Lewis just says, "Oh, you know, I'm leaving behind my old life," and he just tosses one out the like off the building. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's uh, that that's probably it. It's just small hints as to like how the characters are moving forward with their decisions. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm still not liking Haru, but you know, maybe again, I'm just a little biased. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, I feel bad for, uh, you know, actually the thing that, that made me like, the thing that I, I was more concerned about in this episode was when Lewis and the others was at the black market. And there was that one like lizard guy or whatever who had like, certain parts like labeled as to if you ate that part uh like you'll you'll get better in these like aspects or whatever right yeah the, cro it was get, the crocodile yeah, yeah it was a crocodile and then you got yeah. old master splinter coming up in a wheelchair so you know before i die i want to have relations with my wife <laughs> before i go so then uh apparently i guess if you eat the um uh, the private parts that gives you better performance in bed or whatever so <laughs> So I was like, oh, man, oh, rip this guy. Well, that's, oh, my God. That was, that was a weird scene. I rewatched that scene like three times to make sure I understood what was going on. I mean, it sounds like solid logic. I mean, come on. Oh, man. <laughs> Wait, was that, is that like, is that an actual thing in the show or was he like, just like, just. No, that's what happened. Like, he was chained up and then he offered, I guess he needed money, right? So he offered like parts of his body up for money. Mm -hmm. And then the guy wanted his private parts because if he would have consumed that, uh, it would give them like more benefits in bed. I, so. I'm sure it's like it's like no. an, it's like an old myth, like like an old. Like, I think it's a Chinese. Yeah, I think it's like a Chinese, Chinese thing. Chinese yeah. like traditional Chinese medicine thing, or like if you, yeah, if you eat like like something like that, like you get like stronger in bed or something. Yeah, I've ever right, heard about it. Right. Could be. But, but yeah, I I wouldn't be able to watch that. Oof, man, just hearing the guy scream, getting his like stuff cut off. Whew, that's that's rough. <laughs> A little bit confused about know that Lewis is running the whole black market. Like I knew he was a part of it. I know he's the leader of the lion group, but he runs the black market. Did you know that? <laughs> no, he runs. Uh, he runs one of the groups that runs the black market. I yeah. guess. And I'm yeah. assuming that the old rat guy was probably his client or something. Yeah. Because from the looks of it, I guess he was just kind of overwatching the whole ordeal. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Very weird. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't really explain that. They kind of just threw in their group just so we can see. Yes, but yeah. Well, and then there was the scene in the beginning too with um that that what was it? She, I think she was a cheetah, wasn't she? Sheila, and she Le was leopard, 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 yes. leopard. Yes. You don't want another instant of. Make sure we get the animals right. You don't want another instant. Look at all the comments. If we're she's not right, not, yeah. she's not quickly searchable on my anime list. Okay, like I have a bad <laughs> memory. So we got this leopard and alpaca girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make a disclaimer for everybody listening that we are not zoologists again, so please do not take our animal identifications. While we're on this topic, uh, Zero Dead X Twenty One, thank you for the comment. Oh yes, yes. For uh, for the uh, for the section of um, 
keeping us on point with these animals. We're, yeah. we're just people who watch anime. Um, yeah. We are not it. knowledgeable people whatsoever. Um, I don't know. I what do not I, I'm, in, I'm in school for zoology. I don't know about you guys. Right, right. So yeah, there's uh, that random scene between between those two girls where they went shopping and became friends. It was just kind of an off episode. It felt like a breather episode after the last one, to be honest, which I was actually okay with because last episode was so intense. Like it, it just felt like it was trying to empower or sh- uh, like just focus more on like the female cast of the show, because unless this correlates to something later on, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, Juno is going to be the the next uh, head or lead actor in the upcoming uh, show that they have, unless that signifies something. I don't know why they threw that in. Like this leopard girl, I really don't care why they focus on her. This alpaca girl, I don't know why they threw her in. Um, I don't know what, what their significance was in the show. And then, yeah, you got Juno and like her kind of like twisted point of view about uh, segregation and whatnot. So it was a really weird episode. Really weird. Yeah, it was off. That's okay. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll come back next episode. I'm not too worried about it. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. I think that's it, though. Uh, yeah. All right. So we'll leave it there for B stars. Um, Stratton, if you want to talk real quick about Slime Show, because I didn't watch it again either. <laughs> oh God. Okay. So there's a couple things I wrote down for notes. Uh, not much. Um, but things are things are kind of finally happening. Uh, Rimuru, you find out that he got out of the fight in a sense. He basically created a doppelganger of himself. Um, but right before like the impact what that happened, he basically was able to somehow clone him, clone himself, and he was able to drop down and run away while his clone was still fighting. Uh, his, his doppelganger got absolutely obliterated, and then she walked off, you know, just walked off. I think, assuming he's I think you mean Kagebushi no Jutsu, that too. Like, it, it could be easily that as well. And then, uh, so he, he basically, for Johan. all right. Yeah, um, but then it's uh, so then he so basically after she walks away, and then he then gets he goes transported because he can't uh, to another place because he can't actually get into the town, and then which is because it's just blocked off. Which I thought like I thought he was just able to to you know port like really like places he's been. I don't know, but he was so, anymore, man. I just thought yeah, he was I don't remember either. Just destroy so, the barrier. Or can I don't just, really can just eat about the that, barrier. But. And then the thing he wasn't he was like he was in a different location though. So he yeah, basically okay. had, a, he had a somehow port to it. He couldn't port to it, but for some but I don't I don't feel confident enough to really talk you know go into de- details about it because <laughs> I have no clue what his abilities are anymore. Um but it's I don't know, it's, but he gets but then he ends up going just kind of like walking through the barrier. Or no, he ends up um analyzing the barrier fine you know, because he just basically asks the spirit inside of him, like, oh, okay, what is this? How do I take care of it? And then she just tells him everything, and he, all the answers. And so he blows up the barrier. Uh, he's able to walk in, and then he basically, like there's just a bunch of people that are there, actually there's a lot of people dead. Uh, and, I mean, but it's like it's just normal towns members. It's just you know, uh, just random goblin people that we have you know we've really never seen. we've probably seen them as background characters, but nobody like noteworthy. There's a lot of people like severely injured, like the uh, the old guy, like the old ninja guy. Um, they kind of go over that, but then he kind of takes like a level headed where he basically asks, he, he's like go, asking for more answers to kind of figure out like what's kind of completely going on with the, uh, and then they find out that it's like a demon lord kind of like with like all these, it's kind of pulling the strings. Um, but which is one of the weird things is like they're, they were like hopping to different places and then they weren't able to like communicate with each other because they, uh, um, because like the barrier interference and everything like that. So, Rimuru created like some magic strings that act like a walkie talkies. No clue how it works. Never got an explanation. So like we just kind of went with that. It's like the cup in the string. No, no this is just string. There oh. was no cup. So I, I don't know. It, it, it was basically know. like just created like where he's just like, okay, with this string, you know, we, we can talk. And then they don't, don't even question anything. They're like, all right. And then just break off. It's, and then it works. <laughs> and so it's like, okay, cool, cool. Um, it's a, it, I don't know. It's like things are. Like it felt kind of serious, but at the same time, it's I still don't take it serious because they're still so OP, and they're really only going to war with humans, and humans are fucking terrible in this show. Like they just seem like they're abs- they're just they're they're so weak. I mean, it, it basically sounds like because well, I think like monsters like they're able to level up, but when you give them names, but humans are just <laughs> basic. <laughs> they're just basic, they're, uh, throughout the entire show. That's what I got from it, and uh, I and I, so I think it's just basically I I'm trying to remember how the episode ended. But it's more like it sounds like they're kind of setting up some stuff to basically uh they're asking like other uh like that god that old guy 
<laughs> that old guy that's like in the um that human guy that we're like, rumor is actually like a- a- allies with, which I don't remember. He's right. like that king, that king human. They gave him brandy. I don't know. Oh, I think he's the it's... dwarf king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds right. Like, yeah. so I think he's, he's basically the, reaching out for assistance he's, with them. Yeah, he's dwarf king. Yeah, there's absolutely no reason why he, he needs help from anybody. Um, but it's I, I don't know. So it's more like things that they're just doing kind of things that just don't matter. Um, <laughs> or it, it just feels like they could go around it like in different ways if they really wanted to. They just haven't done it. Uh, so I don't know. It's I don't, I don't know. I probably should just stop because I don't really feel confident in talking about this show. Um, it felt like I watched it. I watched it with. I think it comes out Tuesdays. I think Tuesdays. So yeah, I, I mean, Tuesdays, it's yeah. another one of the shows that I, it's like way at the beginning of the week. Week do not remember. <laughs> but it's, but yeah, I mean, it's it's like it's getting interesting. I'm just not at the point where I invested yet in this season. So it's uh, I'm I'm actually paying attention now. They I think they've gone past the point of world build or not world building, but towns building and everything. Even though they don't have to rebuild the town because the entire town got basically demolished, like it's all up in flames. Uh, so it's uh, which I'm sure with their timeline and recovery and stuff, it'll be very quick when it gets back up. Hmm. Yeah, this was a terrible re- re- like reveal or like explanation, guys. Let's, uh, let's just move I mean, on. It's fine. Just <laughs> just brief mention. All right, I'll be it for slideshow. Yeah, there's still, yeah, there's still so much better. Maybe it's one day I'll like, catch up to it and I can contribute. But it's I, I'm don't worry about it. <laughs> so and then also speaking of which, so that's the first time show. I didn't watch any Lock Horizon this week, so. I don't know if you want to mention. I watched it. Oh, why? I don't know. Yeah. I, just, I just ran out of time. I, again, I stack all my shows on Sundays, so I just ran out of time. Yeah, Lock Horizon. They basically show. Like, I just. I remember I made some notes before I do any of them. <laughs> uh, they like the only thing I knew was uh, it's basically they kind of uh, they talked about um, Krusty's axe and how it has just a garbage ass ability, and I just thought like this is the worst fucking axe of the world. Like, I was like, why would you use this when you have a healer in the party? But anyway, the axe is basically like. The axe, when you you deal damage, you hit people with it, you basically gain like percentage of health back. But using it, you cannot be healed. You cannot use heals. Nothing. It's the only way you can get healed. I was like, motherfucker, you have a healer in the party. Why are you using this? I was like, you you gotta have something better Don't than right this now. Because last week he said he was yeah. he was cursed because he can't even be healed in the first place. So uh, the, somehow the cur- he overpowered the curse somehow. <laughs> Oh okay. my god! Oh my god! I, I wish I would have <laughs> overpowered the curse. Yeah, I fucking, now you reminded me, David. I s- wish I would have put notes on this. Oh my god! It was a bunch of garbage. It, it's more of one of those things because specific rules were set in something else. They they like they basically applied like differently. It's it's like uh, and then he was saying it was like oh like he was trying to go over some garbage thing where he was just saying oh like the like the weapon doesn't specifically say this. Hence you can do this. I'm thinking. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like, oh so, my god! <laughs> breaking, it's, oh god. I, I breaking, I would have breaking had. game mechanics, which is basically laws of physics in that world. Yeah, David, I hope. Oh, please rewatch it uh, or, or watch the episode, and we can talk about this part next week. Okay. I'm just going to cut it short because I I feel, feel very confident we can have a lot of fun with this. I fucking <laughs> forgot it. Okay. Damn it. Well, okay, I'll, okay. I'll rewatch it too, and I'll actually take notes. Well, I don't want to, but I'll do it for the. We'll, I'll do it for the. We'll save it for, the for next week. All right. <sighs> Oh god! So that's it for Lock Horizon, then, and, and then now, now if you guys want to uh, regroup for Kimono G G Hen, because I have no idea, I still have no idea what the show is about. Is it so? Is it good? Right, is it worth picking up later? Uh, you know, getting better. If you have free time, sure. Yeah, you okay. got nothing else to do. It's a very shonen-y. <laughs> yeah, no, if you have nothing else to do. <laughs> Yeah, it's shown to me. I I finally watched the last three episodes. I mean, they were just better. I I liked it okay. Mm. It felt a little over dramatic this episode for me. Not that like anybody's reactions were incorrect, but just like hundreds of these mutant things. Like it just seemed like such overkill. I don't know. It just, <laughs> hey, you know, it sounds like anime. <laughs> uh, hey man, um, the, the mama and the uh, the uncle were getting busy. You know, you gotta get say, that. Gonna make that the golden un- thread. <laughs> yeah, the uncle needed to make that money. One way or another, so. Oh God, um, did did we? Uh, I forget. Did we want the uncle to die or not die? I f- we. I, I think. Or... I think. I think we just asked of whether or not we thought the uncle would die because yeah. a human character has yet to be killed right. in this mm-hmm. show so far. Like all kimonos and, and demon entities, like they're whatever. They could just be wiped out. No, you know. 
-hmm. no kind of emotions or, or strings attached, but this is the first time where we had a human character. And I think last week I was asking Ku if you thought that they would kill him or not, or if um, Shiki's uh, half-sister, Aya, might come into the equation to save him. I think I said I would want him to die, but I don't think he's going to die. Like, I feel like they would cop out. I think that's what I said. Well, the prophet has spoken yet again. And, and what did we see this episode? <laughs> he's he'll, he'll, like, he's not going to get the easy way out. You know, yeah. like, this is worth than death, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, fucking knew it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, I think this episode was more of just a closure for uh, Shiki's arc. So definitely. Uh, yeah, I didn't really so, see the preview for next week, so. Neither did I. I thought it was really weird that his mom was still alive, too. Like, not bad, weird, but just... It, it, just felt, it felt convenient, and it makes me think, yeah. like, they're not going to take anything, like, too far in terms mm -hmm. of, like, last week's episode when they, you know, touched upon kind of the darker elements of Shiki's uncle using his mom as basically uh, a baby maker in this sense to, you know, get after this sought golden web... And then it ends up being that, oh, yeah, she was just in a cocoon the whole time, just chilling. Like, you know, she's fine. It's whatever. Mm. Um, so that was, a, I think, a little bit of a letdown. Um, mm -hmm. I think the other thing is just the continual use of Kabane to overcome yeah. any and every obstacle it's with so his stupid. red hair ability. <laughs> like, he does, like, I just, I'm so sick of him just being like, okay, well, I'm just going to punch and take out these, like, hundred. Hundred yeah. monster mutant things when I've never fought before in my life. I'm a child. I'm literally tinier than everybody I'm standing next to, and I can just, just, I, I it's, hey, a yeah. super <laughs> Saiyan kimono child. Okay, I mean it's pretty impressive I mean, that he skipped like the first four levels of Super Saiyan. So you know, I got to give him oh, some credit for that. Just go to Super Saiyan Red or yeah, God Mode, yeah. whatever. It sounds like a so, kind of show for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, no, I think we're seeing more and more like the characters are really not going to evolve. I think at least personally from kind of the archetype that we get introduced to them as, especially mm. uh, Akira. Again, we see I as you know, Koo called it where just can't do anything, just complains like, and cowers in the corner and, you know, needs to be the heroine who is a guy. <laughs> it's like I pissed myself trying to find you guys in these woods. I yeah. pissed myself three times. Like, how much pee do you have in there? Yeah, it's, uh, like it's, it's kind of annoying. Where it's like we, <laughs> as the watcher, it's like we get that. It's like you don't yeah. need to keep on drilling that into our heads. So it's like yeah. I wish you know they would have done more to stray away from that. But hey, if that's, that's what they're gonna do, then that's what they're gonna do. I just cut the character. He's completely useless. That's what I've been saying, you know? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, holy shit, dude. When you make a character like more useless than Sakura, sorry, Johan. Uh, it's like, <laughs> it's, dude, it's crazy how, like, like he's even part of this agency or whatever. Like, why does, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, the detective? Inugami. Inugami. Yeah, Inugami, yeah. Like, why does he even keep Akira around? Like, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Um, but you know, you know, by showing and trope, he's going to be super powerful and useful at the end of the, the, the season. So uh, let, you know, yeah, yeah. You're probably right. So, yeah. I mean, if anything, hopefully his story arc comes and then he levels up or powers up somewhat. So, yeah, I, I hope we're getting more seasons. Like, even though the show hasn't been phenomenal with like all the storylines that still have to be given kind of like background to like. If they're really trying to do this in just, what, the 12 episodes that they have, then it's going to be really rough. But I don't see how they could. That would be insane, in my mind. Yeah, no, uh, there's no way. There'd have to be more seasons, but I don't think it's going to get more seasons. So it's really just think hopefully... so? I don't think so, no. Hmm. I think. I, do you think anybody's even noticing this show with the lineup this season? Like, will it even get the views? I haven't checked. The, well, I guess I have it right here. Uh, 7.55 yeah. on MAL. Yes. Maybe, uh, uh... But... No faith. No faith. I will say though that I did like the ending with Nobi Maru, and uh, I, I think he, this like, kid is like a little sociopath, and I don't know. Oh, yeah. His, his like kitsune form at the end was super cool. Like I was uh, like, oh man, zooming you on people. his teeth and everything. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. and he just like burnt that. into a crisp. So. Mm -hmm. no, that was nice. I, I like it when they go to these darker elements because it you know kind of pulls it apart from the usual kind of like you know weekly episodic like hey let's go on an adventure type thing. Or there are no ramifications to, you know, the things that we're kind of involving ourselves in. So, uh, yeah, if we don't get uh, a second season or anything, then 
I think it's going to be really rough and there's just going to be like very limited closure and exposure to these characters. And I think that's sad because I think there is like a lot of potential that they could do with a world of this nature. But Mm -hmm. I don't know if Mm -hmm. like you said, if there's nothing that really make it stand out and it's not getting, you know, the reviews or eyes on it that it needs to be, then, yeah, it's going to be a pretty tough sell unless someone in the industry is just like, nah, this is my child. Like, we need to keep going and just keeps, you know, fronting the bill. To these animation studios and stuff so uh yeah i don't think this show has anything unique enough to warrant a second season so it's it's fair yeah uh, yep. it's gonna be rough if possible but hey i've been wrong before so yeah i'm just surprised because i think it's being animated by white fox and white fox does re-zero don't they pretty sure that's the same studio so, yeah. so they do all a bunch of yeah other shows like easy easy guys and stuff so yeah, and I, yeah, like I've always enjoyed the quality of the animation and stuff from uh, White Fox and even for, you know, Kimono Jihen as well. Like the animation has never been an issue or anything. So, right. Yeah. Opening is pretty weak. <laughs> I have one complaint about the packaging that that opening song and the opening animation is. Yeah, not great. All the budget went to Razor. Probably, yeah, yeah for sure. As as it, I mean, as it should, yeah, as it's you know, cash cow money winner, but I don't know. I, yeah, so we'll we'll see. I, I think I agree with you guys that probably won't get any continuation, but um, mm-hmm. I think if anything, still good that they're kind of trying to see what what sticks and what doesn't. But um, I think like we continue to see, it's like they're not really reinventing the wheel for any sorts and it's not really a compelling enough story especially with these characters that are very one-dimensional so probably be a a ship it and finish at the end of this uh this 12 episodes that we have here Hmm. yeah that's all i got for this week so yeah so that's gonna be it for um kim and jihen and then um if you want to talk about uh i'm a spider so what for a little bit um, for me, Ku, like, talk about a show that I feel like is kind of starting to fall flat. Like, <laughs> this episode, I was, like, very kind of whatever. Like, I was kind of paying attention, but I was also just, like, looking at other stuff on my second monitor while watching yeah. it. Um, I don't know if you share similar sentiment or... Yeah, they're making it so hard to, like, be interested in this show, you know? Like, yeah, you're introducing the, the other spiders now. Um, and yeah, like it's supposed to be somewhat funny with Kumiko's jokes and whatnot, but yeah, I mean, they just completely ignored what happened last episode towards the end and they just focused more on just, uh, Kumiko's uh, like skill development, I guess. Yeah. Her um, gotta catch them all mentality of like, okay, I'll take this. I'll take that. I'll take this. And it's kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, definitely this episode fell flat. And like I said, it makes it really hard for you to stay interested and keep watching it but mm-hmm. but god damn it man we're already this far in <laughs> i know and the fact that we have you know the 24 episodes like there's still a lot of time for for it to develop but man yeah. like you said like the the episode from either last week or two weeks ago where it's like you know we're starting to learn more about like the demon lords and we have all these theories of you know who we think is um who as like the reincarnations and still like this you know, mm-hmm. up in the air thought of like if we're being told the story at different kind of points in time. But man, this episode was so much filler of just, you know, as you said, like Kumiko gaining more powers, gaining more like internal personalities to handle magic and and other, you know, things for her while she fights and cracks the continual jokes and uh, present time like references that we as a viewer are supposed to be like, oh, that's funny. I get that because that's relevant to, you know, uh, the timeline I live in or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, the whole like field trip flashback of, you know, learning more about the students and everything like I just really didn't care much for that. The only character that I was kind of interested was the character that they call Spooky or whatever. The other like girl character. I think it's a girl. Pretty sure. Um, uh, and, so, yeah. and wondering who that individual is going to be like in the mix of this reincarnated world that they now inhabit. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, other like the only important tidbit from this episode is the fact that according to the teacher, like Kumuko is dead, which yeah, you know, right shouldn't be the case, right? But if you throw in the time lapse, this is in the future, so maybe she faked her death or something. Mm-hmm. But 
that just leads you to to thinking, you know, like what's going on? Like we, there's obviously something going on in the background. The teacher obviously isn't telling us exactly what's going on. Is she yeah. on it? Was she the reason why there all the students are transported here? You know, if if they're lying about Kumoko dying, is anyone really dead, or are they just the students that that went rogue and became too powerful, right? So exactly. Uh, other than that, to be, yeah, there wasn't really much going on this episode. Yeah, so. I think that's the the one thing, like you said, that really kind of my ears perked up on with like, oh, okay, how how are we going to you know address this, and what kind of uh, rationale does the teacher have for lying to the students? Um, I think the only other thing that I also kind of turned me away a bit was how they had really made an emphasis on last week's episode of Kumiko having this like almost um, Truman show like revelation of like, Oh my God, like, am I just a character, you know, in this world being controlled by this greater administrator being. And then I can't even recall if they even like address that at all. Or if she just kind of was like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, like, you know, I, I, yeah. I was like, I thought about it, but fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> so but uh, let's I, let's not compare this to the Truman Show because uh, I don't know some people might get mad if they know what that is. <laughs> like, how dare you compare this to a true, match? true, true. Uh, yeah, I, I know people love it. That was the only reference, so I apologize. That was just the thing that immediately came in my head of similar type situation of like questioning what's going on and what is your you know quote unquote reality of sorts. Yeah, so. I mean, but then but then you are right though, right? Like, what if what if Truman just said, you know, fuck it, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, just... though, and then he just continues, and it's like, okay, there's no movie. Then it's just, all right, continue my life. So, yeah. I'm sure at some point that'll come back, and then we'll get all the insight into like, you know, what is the criteria for being an administrator? What is, you know, this world? Furthermore, that currently all these characters have now found themselves in. But yeah, it's definitely uh, a slow episode of sorts, and then. You know, they do the kind of the the usual formula of, oh, at the end of the episode, like Kumiko has to fight this, you know, new type of monster being and use kind of the new abilities that she's been researching earlier in the episode. So very formulaic still. But like I said, we got a lot of episodes left, a lot of time. So we'll yep. keep uh, we'll keep the hope there and just see how we, we go as we progress in the weeks to come. But I'm telling you, I have a feeling human form Kum uh, Kumiko, mm -hmm. ooh, it's going to be worth it. I, I have right. a feeling. All right. <laughs> and there's going to be four of her, hopefully. Maybe. We shall so. see. We shall, we shall see. see. <laughs> well, yeah, that's all we got for this week. Let so. me know if that happens, Koo. Uh, oh, oh, you I'll better let you know. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, that's going to be for I'm Inspired So What. And then we move on to Wonder Egg Priority, which I don't, know we, I don't know if we mentioned that apparently it's going to take a break this week. So, no new episode, no new episode on Tuesday. So. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, interesting. At least that's why I heard. So. But don't blame me if it actually does happen. You know, wrong. <laughs> okay, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll check it out, just in case. Definitely. So, so uh, how do you guys feel about the the theme of the show now? It looks like everything's kind of becoming more serious. Yeah, I uh, I liked I liked this episode a lot. Yeah. You know, it makes me not that I didn't care for the four main girls. You know, in prior to this, but mm -hmm. um, it's good to get you know that backstory of why they act the way they do and kind of what led them to you know the actions that they take in this kind of anime. So, I mean, I think this this definitely solidified like the weapon that they use is it's definitely something that's like really impactful for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think we we kind of knew, but I think this is basically like uh like a definite thing now that we know i don't know if you guys would agree <laughs> no i i, I totally okay. do um, yeah no it makes sense right pen for yeah. the school scissors for the cutting um oh pen i didn't even think of the pen for this school i just assumed it was something else i mean that, that's something i could think of right like yeah. why else would the pen be signifying right uh, yeah like it's gotta be something though because well, i think like easy. the different colors that the pen has because it's one of those like three color like switch pens and i i didn't know if it had anything to do with like her multiple eye yeah, colors as yeah. well yeah. i don't know yeah it's possible but but i like the i like the school thought though <laughs> yeah I, it definitely I works as that. well yeah, yeah. Like the, the school and the eyes like it actually both really make sense but um, so we'll see but yeah i don't know about nehru and momo though because what nehru just has like a gun right is her a like big gun dude yeah <laughs> so i mean maybe does it change i thought it changed i think Bot it changes to like a sniper rifle and like other variants most of a gun time. but still right. like a gun for the most part and uh that brings up the fact that we learned in this week's episode that nehru either doesn't know her parents at all or something happened to them before or like right after she was born, she never had any kind of experience. So she's basically like the Batman of this series. 
<laughs> oh yeah, right. Because he's, he's he's a girl. I like this I'm mega m- million dollar like corporation. So, but was but was Bruce Wayne this depressed though? I, think I mean, he, he, didn't, bit... he, he didn't come Batman, so I, I don't know. I'm sorry to all you Batman fans, but uh, I just... apologies for everybody who does funny. not enjoy my wild takes. It's just the things that come <laughs> into my mind. I'm just like, you know, grasp me at the straws. You're like, hey, no parents has a, you know, multi-million dollar like company and lineage. Batman. There you go. Yeah. Um, but uh the other was it the other girl where it, it, it seemed like it focused more i kind of like first i kind of felt like it was almost like out of uh it kind of came almost out of nowhere was when she, you know she's just like oh like one of these people are like my dad or one of my one of these people are like my dad like and i want to like find out who it is hmm. and then it's kind of like the the circle thing about how like, they were all talking about it just kind of didn't go her way then all of a sudden she or it didn't really go her way but everything just got really serious at that point yeah uh mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of take it as these things as like, obviously, everybody, every girl in this main group, like, has their own, like, uh, background in history, their baggage, I guess, so to speak, of like, you know, things that have happened in their life. And I personally took it as with Rika for this episode. um, She really wants to be the center of attention, for lack of a better word, at the end of the day, at least kind of as I see it. And the fact that, you know, he to this point had never really revealed what was the things in her life that was really bothering her. Um, I think it totally makes sense for kind of her her lashing out and kind of her childish ways. I mean, they are children, but, you know, yeah. to act even like younger than what they currently are. Um, but I thought it was really cute as well, like the um, interactions that Rika and I had with each other, both on the couch mm-hmm. and then also when they're um, looking out over like the Tokyo landscape or Japan landscape. And she's just, like telling her like, oh, yeah, that's probably where my family's like bar is or whatever and stuff like that. And her just kind of like breaking down a little bit and being like, hey, is it OK if I cry now? Like, I'm going to be honest, Rika, with you right now and tell you how I really feel. And it's just like, mm. damn. For that, I, I thought it was kind of a good spin too. Like when they when they were first doing like the whole thing, where she, like at towards the end of the episode, where she was kind of giving up, where mm-hmm. she's just like, oh, I just don't want to like do this anymore. I don't want to try. And like normally, you know, like the, where you just always see like the voices of like basically like the friends like you know reaching out. You think it's going to be one of those David's fr- like, fa- uh, famous or favorite moments where it's power of friendship. Basically, Again, I thought of it. I thought of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. You know, yeah. right, when you <laughs> first called it that, I was just like, all right, here's the power of friendship coming yeah. in clutch. <laughs> but it didn't happen this time. It was actually the power of the turtle. The turtle's a beast. Uh, when that thing busted out. <laughs> yeah, that was that was dope. Yeah, because that was actually what like kind of gave her like the the power to think of it, and basically she 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 saw herself as like the turtle's mom in a sense, and then uh, basically kind of snapped out of it from there. It wasn't really even like the the friends that got her mm-hmm. um, out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was kind of a, a neat like little twist as well. Um, yeah. God, what else? I also I also feel like um, that uh, I, I feel like her mom knows who it is, but I feel like I just got the kind of like the vibes where she knows like who he is, and I just. I just think of it that like he's probably like a complete douchebag, and he's not something. It's she's, mm-hmm. and he's not somebody who who Rika thinks he actually is. And uh, I, 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 I think mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to think of her mom as like a t- completely terrible person. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't Maybe, think she knows. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Ku. Yeah. You don't think so? I, mean, I I feel like she knows. She's just acting like she doesn't know. I think she knows too. <laughs> you think so? I yeah. feel like she doesn't know, but she doesn't want there to even be like the opportunity for Rika to know because. That is an opportunity for Rika to leave. And especially at like the end of the episode, we see, you know, kind of this honesty from Rika's mom of just like, yeah, like, I know I'm not the greatest mom. I know what I do is not, you know, the most like um, positively viewed, you know, kind of profession and lifestyle. And she was like, yeah, if you leave me, Rika, like, I I get it. Like, you're going to leave me. But then Rika has that moment where it's like, yeah, I'm going to leave you, but not for not today or not for a while. So. (laughs) I don't know. I still feel like she's protecting her from from the actual you. bad. I, I got. I, I think of all those vibes. Uh, I wasn't uh, sure okay. about protecting her from the dad per se, but that there's some reason why she needs to keep it quiet. I, I got totally the same vibe as you. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's also like it's the, even like I they kind of mentioned. I think they were like I think like the whole thing was like basically how uh, or there were multiple sayings where they were saying like the mo- like moms aren't actually that bad, or like you need them in some way. Um, I can't completely remember what it was. I wish uh, I you, you, sh- you should protect your mother. Like, you should protect your parents. Yeah. 
yeah, they, they, something like that. So I, so I just keep, I just keep getting the vibes. Like she's just, like she's just protecting Rika from like the actual who he is. Like he's either, I just feel like he's just a garbage human being, <laughs> and she knows this and just doesn't want to have Rika know. But that's what I think. Yeah, it very well could be. It felt to me like, because like. It seemed like they were kind of trying to straddle that line of making it seem like she didn't care about Rika or Rika felt like she didn't care about her or something. But like I never really like, and, and like Rika even mentioned at one point that it seemed like the mom like resented her or something after the dad left mm-hmm. and after she gave birth to her. But that's really just not the feeling I got from her mom. Like her mom seemed to care. She just isn't yeah, a great I mean, mom. You know, she got like, her the cake and everything for her birthday though. Really looked yeah. good. So. She just seems like somebody who is traumatized by something to me. Like she's just not like in the best position to be a great mom and she just seems traumatized. But it doesn't seem like it seems like she cares about Rika. So I'm actually kind of curious to see where that storyline goes. I hope that we get to see that fleshed out. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm actually glad for the episodes they're focusing more on these elements instead of like the fighting elements. Yes, like they're, it's like brief definitely that we don't need them. I would. I mean, much they, point they need to part. right with how many episodes we have left and how much we yeah. still don't know about Nehru and Momo. I would say mm-hmm. are the two characters right. yeah. that probably in these episodes to come. Those are going to be the two main focus. I mean, like one episode for each of them. Yeah, yeah especially they gotta be nice. the original too. And I mean, we're down to like very you know a few episodes left. So sorry, yep, yeah. I cut you off. <laughs> Oh no! I just want to say, um, I, I feel like the the mother does care about uh, Rika, of course, but I feel like I I really don't want to say it, but I feel like maybe Rika was an accident, right? It was just a woman who wanted to have fun. She had too many drinks. She made a mistake. She had a child, and all of a sudden, she's also a bar owner. So uh, you're kind of just stuck between a rock and a hard place. And as a single mother, you're doing your best. Yeah. Um, is it a bar owner or is it their house? <laughs> so, it's like I mean, it's like it's half house, and half. The front yeah. is for like the bar, but then yeah, the little like back okay. room is you know their living yeah. accommodations. All right, continue. Right. Yeah. So I mean, definitely, I feel the love is there, but I really don't think the mother knows who the father is. It was just something that happened when she was out with these five guys. That's why she told Rika, you know, here's five guys. Good luck figuring it out, right? But she even oh, made yeah. it so it's definitely one of these guys, though. Like it feels like it's it's definitely like it's it can't be anybody else. It's definitely one of those five, right? Because I mean, she was drunk, and usually when she's drunk, she's honest. So I'm sure she was not lying. She probably thinks it's one of these five, or she knows it's one of these five guys, but she doesn't yeah. really know. So okay, yeah. Well, I guess like I, now that I think about it, I was right and Taylor, your guys' uh, thought of you know the mom not wanting her to know who the dad is. I guess that makes more sense of like the two flashbacks that they kind of, I think they use the same flashback of like her in the car with the dad and literally like the only main memory that sticks out with Rika. And as we learned, like when we were first introduced to Rika is her dad being like, Oh, you know, beautiful girls don't have to pay for anything. So it sounds like even the dad is kind of like a a sleazeball in terms of like how Mm -hmm. he views, you know, the male versus female kind of like (laughs) roles in the society. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely feel like one of us, I think, has it right, though, just from like the different. It's, it's got to be one of those, right? It can't be we're some. Pretty much got our angles covered. So, one yeah, of yeah, us. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> good. You know what? We can, we Maury, where you at, Maury? It's got to be more in there. You are <laughs> not the father. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do a backflip or something. I don't know. I, the only last thing is I can't remember. Uh, was it this episode as well when Rika was about to give in that like both the two alien like mannequin figures kind of oh, had yeah. their like conflicting ideals where one of yeah. them was very much so like, yeah, she's going to die. Like it was going to happen eventually, whatever. But then the other one was like, no, like we can't let her die. So it's interesting to see yeah. kind yeah. of as we've had these interactions with uh, Uraka, I think is his name. And then like the other one's like a spin off of that name yeah. um, where they like two sides of the same coin where you know in their kind of ideology so it almost makes me think that like that is potentially like one individual that's maybe just been split like very hardly in terms of this like light versus dark type thing but i don't know yeah Yeah, exactly some type of like focus on that or maybe it's just two people that are kind of similar where they died and then they got you know dragged in as like the game masters of sorts and they wanted somebody who was like very like high moral versus like low moral like, like focuses. I'm, I keep feeling more and more like they're not evil. I, I actually like truly don't think like they're that evil. Oh god, everybody's silent. <laughs> well, no, I'm just I'm just, either. Yeah, like yeah. I think they play a role similar to like Death Parade. I think they're like arbiters. Again, they, that's a good way to see. It, yeah, they're showing like emotions in a sense. So like Again, they're like talking yeah. mannequins. Yeah, well, at the beginning of the mannequins, like they did, they really didn't seem like they talked much or gave like really any kind of help. 
But now it seems like they're starting to kind of inch more like towards like they're like where they actually like they're showing some sort of emotions. Well, one side of it is at least mm-hmm. where they're actually like dropping hints and the other guy's like, God, shut the fuck up. What are you doing? <laughs> and just trying like, right. like, and then the, the other good dudes just like wanting to actually like, see them either grow, move forward. Mm. So I don't know. It's, I, do, I don't know, David, if you, uh, this, the show is definitely picking up. It's, uh, I, I keep thinking like the show's just been trending. It, the trend, the show's been trending up for, for a while now. The show's been trending up. Mm-hmm for quite a few episodes yeah Hopefully. yeah i'd say if this is the show that you didn't originally watch starting out this season like this is the one to be yeah. up against like all the others. definitely keep yeah, an eye on it like really packed but like next season would be the one to catch up to these these other shows yeah this is looking yeah. like it's gonna be a little bit slower so hmm. but i think I'm yeah good. i mean if we, we have a week out. break then that's great you know we can focus on the other things so yeah. mm-hmm. Total MVP. Oh, the other. Oh, by the way, the fourth animal was the, the alligator or crocodile. I know we we, we couldn't remember last week. <laughs> the familiars. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Familiar, yeah. I, I, I was very. I was actually funny that you mentioned because I was very focused when they showed them again, and I was like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, when they, when they went back when they were eating at the beginning, I, I wasn't paying attention to the animals as a way, and I had to. I went back to be, just to make a note of that. <laughs> I think I did the same. Just got it in there. Yeah. All right. I'm good. Yeah. No, I think that's it. Yeah. We're All good. Right, so we're in it there for uh, Wonder Egg priority. Move on to our next show. Uh, move on to ReZero. Man, dude, there was I like. I'm going to stay very quiet. Okay. Stay very quiet, too. I have no idea what's happening in this okay. show, you guys. <laughs> like, I just don't what? understand anything. So, a lot. What? There was a lot of talking, and then a huge setup. There's that so la- much talking. A huge setup that last part, too. So, I don't know. Uh... A lot of things to dissect through. I guess, like, I'm trying to remember the order. I mean, uh, there's, there's, th- there's things. I do want to talk about, but yeah, try to remember in order. We had the basically we had so in the beginning we had like we had like super the, the trio of Subaru, Odo, and Garfield like, getting ready to go to the mansion, and then basically revealing that like yeah like Odo like he he did he made that the the deal with, with Ram, and then I guess more about um Amelia Amelia the interaction of Amelia and, and and Ram as well, um. Basically, I do from Amelia and Roswell's interaction. We do know that he definitely he definitely wants her just or well, I guess Amelia still wants to do the royal selection, like what we mentioned a couple episodes ago. Like I guess they, they're still bringing that up, and well, now, Ralph kind of wanted her to do it in the first place. Like I they think wanted her to win it, become the next ruler. Yeah, well, he mm-hmm. always wanted it, but I think now Amelia is finally she's finally like determined to do it. I think she was. She felt more obligated to do it before, but now I think she, now she's like she feels like she has more reason to do it. And then one of the big revelations we learned was that uh that wait did we, did we know before that Roswell was the one that basically like um invaded like, attacked the demon family, demon family or whatever? Did we know that before? Or was that this episode they revealed it? I don't think we uh, did. I didn't remember that ever okay. being said. I was but yeah, my memory idea. is horrible from season one. Okay, stuff, so, so I feel like I feel like that was like. If it wasn't real before, that was a big reveal. That like, because we kept, we kept thinking that that Ram was like just following Roswell this whole time. Like, and then finally, I guess it's just to get back at him for revenge, for the attack, mm-hmm. which is still, it's just again, just this guy is just fucked up. Like, I always hate this clown. He, like, <laughs> fucking clown, yeah. dude. <laughs> like, he sent Elsa to the to assassinate. Wait, was he the one who also sent Elsa to assassinate Amelia in the first place, or was that someone else? Yes. Wait, oh, Amelia, the, it must have been oh, him, right? So, so, yeah, it's um, always been him. I nothing think he's has been confirmed. Been... Nothing has been confirmed, but it, it is possible. Okay, so, because I, I feel like, well, well definitely, he sent he sent Elsa to the mansion, and, and he's also responsible for, like, the attack on Rem, Rem and Rem's, like, family, mm-hmm. and, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, I don't know what this guy's deal is. Yeah. It, it just, like, and he was going to kill, like, Ryuzu to, like, unleash the, the, the spell, all because this fucking book told him to. For a simp that he got yeah, caught up the for. book of wisdom or whatever. So, which I thought was yeah. funny too. That how, a... how like he said him and Subaru are the same. Which <laughs> looking back, they kind of are. But I guess Subaru has mm-hmm. o- overcome it. Yeah, I don't know. Like I really liked seeing this different side of Ram in that interaction between her and Amelia. Of you know putting that faith in Amelia, who she blatantly just said like, yeah, before this, like I really didn't trust you for anything, and like I didn't respect you at all. Um, and now her finally, you know, saying like, hey, I see you, you know, you're facing kind of your your history and your and your, you know, your past and stuff. And now you're really putting your best foot forward to bring to what Ram thinks is like, you know, 
the right way of doing things. And if that also kind of aligns with Ram's wishes to save Roswell. And I thought it was kind of interesting. Like you said, David, where now that we know that Roswell was the one that originally like came to Rem and Ram's village and, you know, basically wiped them out or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, is it safe to say like, is does Ram kind of have like a Stockholm syndrome for Roswell? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Uh, I can't Cause tell. I don't know why she wants to save him then. Like it would be, it would be with, possible with that. because yeah. after the attack, you know, he did take him in. Right. But so, yeah, I thought they were saying that she did that just so like he, she'll wait for her moment to attack him for revenge. Yeah. So that's why I thought it was really weird. Cause yeah, at, later in the episode, like that is the main kind of cliffhanger is their final like face off where literally at the beginning it was, Hey Amelia, like, can you make sure that Roswell gets his wish and you save him from the path that he's going down right now? Because that's destroying him but then later on it's like hey roswell i'm gonna destroy you and it's like wait you know how can you have it both ways you want your cake and you know you want to eat it too like how's that gonna work yeah that's 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 what i was confused about too i just don't know her real intent so uh real quick uh i'm just gonna do a quick shout out we forgot to uh shout out yehu satori again for joining us again uh, for a comment for youtube video thank you man yeah i hope to see you uh Uh, next week keep them coming yes yeah definitely and thank you, Joker, uh, for joining us as well for this part. And I apologize, we are ruining everything for you, considering oh, you're on the spo- first season. Oh, we're spoiling <laughs> it. Sorry. Spoiler Wait, warnings. He, 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 it's okay. We already let him know. We said spoilers in coming, and, he's, and he's, he said it's okay. Spoilers, yeah. yeah. We're good. Mm-hmm. And then, um, also, the fact that, that, like, we were questioning, too, where the hell was Puck? So he was in that crystal the whole time. He super escaped the yeah. crystal, too. He, he seems like he's everywhere, in every damn crystal. Like, who is no. who has a contract with him? What is he doing? Like, He's... I thought he was gone when that thing cracked. Yeah, like, I, I, I thought he was going to be gone for a while. What's happening? I with thought him? he was gone too, but oh. he says he says he was a stray spirit. So I guess he's is he sealed in that crystal? Yeah, I think he's he's I in guess, that crystal yeah, now, right. and then by that Wait, crystal not, breaking he's, on he's Amelia's not, necklace or whatever, yeah, that means that their contract is broken. He's not contracted. That's, that's what I'm but saying. I guess I guess if you're a spirit and you do a contract, you get more power. Otherwise, I don't know what's the point of contracting if if you can have all that power just being a stray. So I assume there's yeah. some benefit of being contracted. Uh, mm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. I'm yeah. assuming there I'm would be. I'm kind of torn on on Puck at the end of the day, where you know I obviously want to learn more about their backstory, but I can't help but feel like Puck is continually used as like a convenient plot device. Because we don't like know. every time they need that extra oomph, you know, Puck comes in and and does Cause, his. Because we don't know like, what, what's like. Because we thought the whole um, we thought he was the reason why like her memory was sealed, but it was Fortuna. So like, mm-hmm. so where is he fit in that that piece? Like, like we don't know like how he's like how he's connected to this part too, or how he met Amelia after. Even with like the OVA, like we still don't really have much details about how him and Amelia first met, or like when Amelia first got out of the the, the yeah. when she when she got the forest because the OVA yeah. only showed her like when she was when she was like basically same age as right before she met Roswell or something. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <sighs> All I know, though, is I, I can't wait to see the fight between Garfield and Elsa, Elsa. coming next week with those gauntlets or whatever that he, he acquired. So, I mean, again, this is this was one of the parts that was uh, in the OP, so we were expecting it to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and then I know I think Strand's the one that keeps saying, like, he's one that keeps predicting that uh, Subaru and Beatrice are going to be get the contract together. I'm pretty sure it's, it, it's a shoe in by now. It's like the way they set up at the <laughs> ending, too, it's got to be that like, right. he's getting the contract. Hey, I called it before the opening, guys. Yeah, you heard so, it here. Yeah, no, no props to uh-huh. Strand. He predicted. I thought it was, I thought it was gonna be Amelia <laughs> nice. was gonna take over, but I guess it's Subaru. Which, so I, I guess spirits. You don't have, you don't have to be a spirit user then to have a contract, unless Subaru somehow what? has spirit powers, or is it really? Is it because like he's like he has the the shadow, like the what the Yin element that's also the same thing as Beatrice. That's why he can use the, the doors. Maybe will we we will we understand? Will we get to find yeah. out? Maybe <laughs> find <laughs> out in uh, season three. Season yeah. three. Of Dude, this was find out next time. Dude, this on a, three zero Z. This was a long. <laughs> I wish I could. Rem- uh, I, 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 it was twenty nine minutes long. Twenty nine minutes and thirty seconds. So yeah. like, yeah. they got the OPA, I, but it was twenty nine minutes. Yeah, I I wish though. I I still kind of wish like. <laughs> the part where I was just like, oh, where I, I call it with uh, with Beatrice and Super. I don't remember even what it was anymore. <laughs> of like what that part, like what we, I don't we. If I went back and watched it, like one of our previous uh, podcasts, I would. Uh, I, I think I I'd be able to figure it out from there. I don't no remember. Idea. It was like I think it was. I think it was the first part of the scene. I think it was summer when like when 
Subaru looped back. Problem, right? he, when he looped back mm-hmm. and he had to talk to Beatrice in the mansion, and we got mm-hmm. to see more about her details, her and Kenya. I think that was summer. I think that's how long. Yeah, I think it was too. Jesus, I don't remember. Was that the first time when we learned like uh, Beatrice's book was just absolutely blank, like there was nothing in it? Was that this season? Okay, I I think think it it wasn't absolutely. uh, The next, like the next chapter or whatever, was blank. Was blank. Okay, yeah, right. The the future was uh, like unsure. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, that's when we found out some about Beatrice, and yeah, I I think that's when I called it when she basically when we found out that she was basically just stuck there, and then I think that we also found out she was a spirit, Mm -hmm. and then I was just like, oh damn. I was like, Subaru. <laughs> yeah, because basically, part yeah. So part one is basically all of the time loops, and part two is just like the same loop. That's, yeah, I think I'm yeah. pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I was kidding too. I think I I even said like if if Subaru was was gonna like uh um join Beatrice in that way, I think I actually said I was gonna give the show a ten out of ten. But I'm I'm completely Ooh. like, no, nah, it's not gonna happen. But because <laughs> I didn't I didn't actually believe it. Wow. Wait, <laughs> go back on your words. But did sir. um did Hector get introduced in this episode? Who? That was last episode. That was the last the episode. Okay, I can't remember. Devil of Melancholy, the guy who beats the shit out oh, of Roswell oh, that we got introduced I, I to in the flashback. I don't remember his title. Yeah, oh, and it's kind of weird of like they show all this stuff and then they literally just pan to the future again, and it's like, okay, so now we're gonna have to get another flashback of like, how does Roswell get saved from Hector, like, and you know, what does Echidna do to save the sanctuary? It, just, it depends on how long this fight will be, like if it's gonna last the rest of the season or what they gotta do. If because it, it sounds like. That. It sounds yeah. like it sounds like stuff like 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 Pandora. It sounds like that stuff won't be mentioned until like next season or or after this season. Yeah. It's yep. so <laughs> hold on, hold on. You mean to tell me that we might not even get Rem back? Nope. Dude, nope. What's nope. Rem coming back? <laughs> what's Rem coming back? Never. At least Rem Petra had the common courtesy to be like, oh yeah, Rem exists, guys. Like, we need to yeah. save Rem. When, you know, Garfield's sister was just like, yo, we gotta get the fuck out of here. And she's like, but, but Rem. And then she's yeah, like, Rem. oh, okay. Dude, me and Petra, <laughs> like, we like this now, you know? Like, we on the same page. What yeah, about Rem? I don't know, like, these people have no idea who Rem is, but because Subaru said the name, like, it's gotta be a thing. That's gotta be a thing, right? Yeah, I mean... Gotta be real. And, and there, okay. In Subaru and everybody else's defense, though, she does look identical to Ram. So I mean, mm-hmm. it's not a stretch to think that she's her sister. Mm-hmm. That is fair. That is fair. And she is physically there, so that kind of helps your case, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, guys, I'm with Petra. What about Ram? <laughs> like, let's let's go save her. We gotta save her. There we go. Yeah, it's okay. I, I think we were pretty much sure that like we like she wasn't gonna wake up, but there's so there's again so many like every episode has like something else that's out there that's not really covered or like you know in like it's it's not um like I just don't feel like we're gonna get like a resolution for it. It's just gonna be like a bunch of more questions. Mm-hmm. Which, Probably. You know, mm-hmm. When you have a yeah. second when you have a second season going on and no confirmation of a third season, it's a great time. Yeah. At- yeah. My only contribution for this episode, though, is like, uh, but speaking about Petra and how she's the only one that seems to know about anything about Rem or care about Rem. Do we think that she's going to make it? Because I'm really attached to this little girl. She's so cute. Re Zero does little kids like so well. They're all just so cute. And I really don't want anything to happen to her. Not make- I don't think anyone died in Re Zero, really, technically. Did they? Uh, this season? Because, like, this season? They did last season. Yeah, last season. Yeah, I don't think anybody's. I don't think somebody's got it this season. I, I feel like the, it's going to be either her or Otto. I don't think any of the villagers <laughs> died, so I don't know. I don't think I don't think okay. they'll kill her off. I don't. It's okay, guys. Yeah. Subaru will save everybody. If one person dies, we're going to reset everything back to the beginning of the second season. Oh my god! Oh, that, that's another thing. <laughs> I like, the show. <laughs> like what, Stop, where? And then I start reading the light now. I'd be like, nope, <laughs> I'm done. Bro, where's the checkpoint? Because he has not died yet, and it's been like what three or four episodes. I'm kind of mm-hmm. scared. Like when he does die, like where is it going to reset? Because it was always um, what was it? It's always after the sink. He was in the sanctuary anyway, so like they can't just go back before then. That we know of. That, uh, I mean, like I feel like that's been the rule so far. V zero. It's like you can't go back for yeah, the last been. checkpoint, and mm-hmm. this last checkpoint is always like the sanctuary. So <sighs> I don't know, man. But yeah. I don't know because at at this point, I don't feel like I don't feel like he has many chances to die and finish out the season in a satisfying manner, right? Mm-hmm. 
So that's what worries me. I just want to know, like, what is Subaru going to do while Garfield is fighting um, Elsa? Because there's also I, the the other assassin, right? The like mini chibi assassin. Oh, I, yep. I that's I supposed to be with her. Elsa. Yeah, so I totally yeah. forgot about her. Now I'm thinking that her. like Subaru is probably gonna face off her. Subaru and Beatrice. It's, yep. it, has Subaru, to, it, has to, uh, it has to be Beatrice. Like <laughs> yep. that's the that's only way to do the pack. All this. And it's pretty yeah. glorious. Was yep. the little chibi one the one that killed Beatrice earlier in the season? No, it was Elsa. I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but she did kind of help distract them. So she I was going to say, it would be very fitting if he was the one that actually killed Beatrice. And then now, you know, the right. tables have turned given the new, you know, scenario. Yeah, I'm going to assume that that's what it's, it's going to be the case. I'm liking the second half way more than the first the first half, though, even though I like the witches. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of conflicted, to be honest, just because I, there's I so just... much going on. It's okay, cool. There's no way. Just it. treat them as one. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> like jokes aside, right? Season, like, there's, like... So, there's so many things going on. I don't know how you're going to get closure. And I'm the guy that hates it when something ends without closure. <laughs> that's fair. You I know, mean, know that, what I mean? That's how I felt about season one. Just felt like, like they just ended with just like, just that, just that scene. And but I felt like there's so much, so much miss, so much missing from the lore. So. Yeah, like, like, what about Pandora? What about Hector the Warlock? And, you know, I don't know if you guys remembered or, like, thought about it, but, you know, the way that Hector talk is how Roswell is talking now. Like, yeah, what's the correlation I noticed that? that the way that Hector dressed is kind of similar to Roswell as well. Yeah. Like, so, like clothing. So, so you're going to throw all this shit at us, and then now you're going back to the to the mansion. Like, hey, like what about the characters you just introduced, you know? That's Ray Zero, man. Yeah. So, like, I'm, so I, I'm conflicted, you know, like because of Ram, I'll give it a nine out of 10 if it ends well, but, it's okay. but, but because of how everything is going, like it's, it's, I don't really know how I feel about it, but I'm still enjoying the show. So I, I treat the first and half, the second half just as one, just cause it felt like it wasn't meant to be split. So that's, yeah, that's, that that's my, true. like, right, right. that's my, I don't know. I don't know if that's a lot of whatever, but that's, that's how I'm seeing it. So I treat it all as one season and I still enjoyed part one, the first half. So. But, yeah, yeah, I think that's going to be it for ReZero. We'll have to do this craziness all over again next week because it sounds like it's going to be a crazy episode. It's going to be a great time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So that's going to be it for ReZero. Uh, move on next to Dr. Stone. And I just, okay, I just think it's, I want to say this real quick for Stred. I think it's so oh, funny God. how, like, um, uh, like you're so you're all about like you want Sakasa to die, and this whole episode is all about <laughs> hey we can't let anyone die. I know. So like uh, yeah. like Senku doesn't want anyone to die, and uh, Ukro had the condition like hey I only I only join you if no one dies. So I'm pretty sure yeah. Sakasa's not cut. That die. is some of the bones I have to pick with this show. <laughs> uh, Justin, you can go for it. Yeah, I, so the first part was with Yukio, and, you know, as we kind of had discussed in the past where we didn't think, you know, he was aligned to Stukasa, and not that he was going to be aligned to Senku as well, which, you know, he still kind of reiterated, like, hey, um, I just really don't agree with Stukasa's, like, mindset and kind of what he envisions of the world, but I just hate this corny kind of concept of, you know, the reason that I'm going to join you is if you promise me nobody dies. It's just like, uh, it's so shonen of the show of like, <laughs> hey guys, we're the good guys. We're going to save everybody because we're either really smart or really powerful. Nobody's going to die and that's the way we're going to do it. Believe it. And it's like, <laughs> it's, uh, oh my God. Like, uh, wrong show. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I know, fine. right? I was fine with the plan where they were, they were saying like, you know, we're going to basically, the plan is to try to not get any deaths, but you know, shit's going to happen. And now it's more of like they're trying to follow like nobody will die. And, and you really? I feel like nobody's gonna dead. die. Oh like, no! I not, honestly, honestly I feel like no, no, that. No, no, yeah, like now it feels like it's more like like solidified like with that. But it's more of like they kind of made it sound like they're gonna it, 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 like almost like death was inevitable, like something was going to happen. Right. But now it's basically like yeah. the plan and the goal is for nobody to die. Like, sorry, were you thinking um, like there? You think like there, there still might be a risk, but now because of this, like there's like they basically got rid of the tension. Less. Yeah, there's like less of that risk. Yeah, well, so I, 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 there's there's one risk that it could follow. I was thinking with the uh, the uh, the sonar guy where it's like where it you know he's on their team for now, but then something right. happens where like you know somebody's like dead, and then just immediately turns like in like basically in battle on them. Which I I I think that could be like oh damn you know that's uh where it, it could be like one of those moments but if nobody dies I 
I don't know. I mean, it kind of ties into the fact, too, with the secret mission that we learned from Yuzuriha, where That's she's rebuilding fucking... the statues that have been That's blown intense. into bits. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, okay, cool. Like, I get that we're trying to tie to, like, the science and everything to it. But it's like, if we're thinking about this, I, I don't want to say the word realistically because I get it. It's an anime. <laughs> it, this is why we stone. don't watch these they shows to yeah, be realistic. It. Right, but right, it's just right. like, come the fuck on. Like, you're not putting together a, like, 5,000-piece 3D puzzle, you know, fixing all these people that Sukasa has just obliterated oh, into dust. Fair. I mean, no human being should be able to obliterate those things <laughs> into dust. In the first uh, I beg to differ, sir. All right. Oh, okay. I, mean, okay. I, right. I, I think it's fair in that regard. But so the, the last part that I will mention from this episode that kind of turned me off was how earlier this season, uh, I think it was you, Stratton, where we were saying how it was really convenient that Sukasa basically called Senku making a vehicle and, you know, <laughs> preparing for it. And the thing yes. that really made me mad this episode was how <laughs> Sukasa, all of a sudden, in terms of his logic and, you know, um, perceptive abilities, yes, did not know anything about, you know, Yuzuriha and Taiju, like recruiting all the people from his camp, going back and forth to this grave site when, you know, yes. he supposedly has all these like henchmen and stuff that should be keeping him informed. And then when he learns about the, the telephone, he's just like, oh my God, what is this? I could have never foreseen this. And it's like, Motherfucker, you just showed us like two episodes ago that you can call what Senku's thinking and know he's making vehicles, but now there's this telephone and you would have never thought about that while you're sitting on your, you know, stone throne all day doing nothing. Like, yeah, that part really bothered me. We're just like one episode. He looks like he's a, you know, genius that can just think of anything that Senku thinks of. And then now there's this other thing that I would say would have been a more obvious thing to figure yeah. out or call. Yeah. And he's like, no, I no, have no, no idea that's this could happen. Let's let's be fair, right? A car like a like a makeshift car, pr pretty simple. But to make a fucking telephone in the stone world, that's kind of far fetched, right? Yeah, but, if you want to think about yeah, realistic, yeah. like, but, no, right? but, but, but but how the show is going though, how Sukas is like able to predict all these moves, right? And yet he basically like he just kind of believes Yo just fell off the waterfall. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, yeah, right. That was, yeah, that was the other part too, and I don't know if he's just like playing dumb for that but, regard, I'm, but. But yeah, yeah it just completely off. goes against Sukasa's character type. Yeah, and I thought like with that. Oh, the, he has feels all of a sudden now. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, that too. But I thought like with that thing, like it was stuck on them. I thought you actually had to use that stuff to remove it. Like, what has he just been like? Has, it, has, is it just an accessory right now? Like the thing with black. Oh, yeah, on? That's, yeah, that's a good point Cause, too. Because like, they're supposed to use the stuff to remove it. So I, unless it was removed, like no, because it would just destroy it. I don't know then. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean know. that part I, I thought was kind of funny just from like Yo's personality. Oh, but yeah, yeah I totally I, I agree with how it. with how Sukasa took it. I was just like, yeah. he would well, he would the, give zero shits. But it's like, all right, that guy wasn't strong enough to live in my world. Like, let's yeah. move on. But the, but the problem with that though is like they basically made it like a, a like a like a comedic moment, but then they made it a serious moment when he then Sukasa when it was basically the piece that made Sukasa dig into the ground. I'm thinking, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> so you take a like a comedic moment. And you actually take it like a like a way to progress the story in a serious manner. I'm like, God damn, yeah. man, I mean, have to do that. I think, God. Yeah. Oh. I think David had said it best in previous episodes where it's like, it really is, you know, the science and like the way that they kind of so um, the simplify that, the science and enjoy it. But yeah, <laughs> otherwise I get it. Yeah, Shonen Jump, yep. they're targeting, you know, obviously younger audience at the end of the day and want to instill all these great kind of uh, ideologies in them. But it's just like, Man, I'm too old for this shit. Like, <laughs> fuck. So hey, I, what, I, I will right, say dude. that um, actually, thinking back about like, cause it it was so weird how like he got surprised it was over the phone, but I think I was thinking more of like like shouldn't he suspect like Taiju and Yuzuhara? But then I was thinking like he was trusting Yukio to do it, and I guess like you like he I guess he didn't predict that like, Yukio would like he would betray them. So I can kind of see that part, but okay, I'm trying to think about the telephone, like like like. Because I wasn't really thinking about how Tsukasa, like, because it does sound far fetched to make a telephone in this d day and age, but I just don't know much about, I don't know if his character would allow, would allow him to, like, think that far, but I don't know, like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It just seems like it, but this episode, it does, like, there was a lot of ridiculous things happen in this episode, like, like the, the Yelp part, yeah. I yeah. totally agree with, like, that part was just so yeah, There's too many that even I had an issue with it. I'm like, uh, no. So this is. 
No, but then again, like with, with regards to Ukyo, right? Like he was part of the Navy, you know, he's a sonar specialist. So uh, I think I mentioned it before too, like he's got to have like somewhat of a strong sense of justice, right? Like why else would you join the military, I guess? If, That's true. Yeah, you called that part. Well, yeah, yeah, part. Can, I mean, Although can... the whole thing with Yo was probably like a, a wild thing because, you know, I'd imagine if you're a cop, right? You <laughs> want to be a good guy, but, but he, he just... He showed he's more... He's very he, he cares more about yeah, power. Well, the thing too about... But Yuko, it's like, um, you don't have to, I mean, he could just join just because, like, he, it was like a job he did just because he, it was something he was good at and it was just he treated it like a job. No. So, right. No, I, I get that. But like I said, when you're in the military, you, you usually would imagine that you develop some strong sense of justice. Um, you usually don't see anyone joining for any malicious intentions, right? Like, oh, I want to better myself. I want to go on adventures. I want to, you know, uh, experience this that uh you know whatever well, whatever the case may be you usually join with like a like a sense of uh purpose right so that's why it wouldn't like surprise me that ukio doesn't want to kill anyone he'll join your team if you're not going to kill anyone so yeah yeah like it does suck that it was convenient for the for the guy so it kind of like like made it kind of cliche and kind of corny or whatever but i mean i can see where he's coming from yeah, but it's uh, I don't know. It's still, I I felt like we yeah. didn't see much of his character to see like for it to, like too much, much of his backstory to see like he really cares about not killing people. That it, it felt it just felt more on the convenient side for me. Yeah, because I mean he has to realize like I mean technically they're like going into a war like what what is he I don't know what he really can see like, like what like what can be like a normal war where there's no death it just seems insane. Uh, it's a cold bad. war. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, guess, I mean, technically, there were still deaths. Just, <laughs> but, yeah, um, right, right. right. Uh, so I, I don't really know. Uh, it's yeah, but uh, again, like I said, like like Justin and me said earlier, you know, like you can't take it too seriously. Just just enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, I, like there, there are yeah. some things that don't make sense. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I need to do because it's like if they're really on this path of like, okay, nobody's gonna die, then it's like, okay, well, what about Sukasa? Like, you're just gonna get him to do full change of heart think, at the end of the season that's and that's happen. how you're going to get over this arc like the thing that Stray doesn't want i think they just got to have him change sides like they don't want to kill him and they can't I, they can't get rid of him so they, i think you just got to make him change sides he's gonna have and that's the thing i'm something. starting to think more and more I'm, often is this okay this is a show where you know you get this new individual that has this you know differing ideology and it's senku and the gang's responsibility to get them to change their ways or you know settle with okay maybe i am a bit out of line so let me you know not do my evil like rebuilding genocide of people that aren't i mean the only thing i can see is like, is like they actually they can't get him to change and he just like just becomes a lone just a lone wolf and just just survives on his own and then senku controls well, like the the bat cave so like he can't revive any more people I think. Well, I mean, what what stops them from just beating the shit out of other statues when they're just like, "Oh, we can't let anybody die." But it's like, I mean, oh, "Okay, yeah, you can go to like, so If, like, if we can... don't see you killing bodies, we're okay now." And it's just like, no, but I think we're forgetting like a key point of the of the episode, right? Um, when I forget what was the name, like his the, the spear guy, Hyoga, whatever. Hyoga. Yep. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. When he was like, like, who are those guys? Like, why do they matter? And then you you show that, or you see that Sukasa was actually like, he he's uh. Like has a sense of camaraderie, right? Like these were his soldiers. Like he remembered their names. Like this is where he's gonna bury, you know, the the people that followed him. Like you show that, yeah, he does have like a nice side to him, and it's possible that he can like uh, change over to a good person. And like with episode, season one, you did see that, you know, before he killed Senku, he did think that, you know, if we would have met at a different time, like could we have been best friends? Yeah. So it's it's always possible that he was able to change. But the person that we should focus on, as in terms of like who's gonna be the key villain, is probably gonna be uh, Hyoga, just because he gave no fucks about the fact yeah, that I, I like, didn't forget about that. Oh, his yeah, his yeah. subordinates yeah. or whatever that he like kicked down into that gas. Yep. Just, yeah. Like, so, so we have to keep that in mind and think that maybe in the future the true villain is gonna be him. Yeah, and that's it could easily be one, yeah. Yes, right. could be. But then, I like that. But then I like that. We're just, we're just pushing the problem down the line. Like then, how you like, get him to change his his mind, his heart if he's like cold and ruthless? So yeah, hey, that's I mean, when you have to. It, it just depends it. at the end of the day. Like how hard are they to this ideology of like nobody can die versus right. at some point yeah. it's like people got you got to die. I mean, like yeah. I mean, if they do it where like nobody dies, I mean, I'm very interested to see how they pull that. <laughs> Pull that rabbit out. Uh, based on how they handled show and before, I'm not too confident. So, 
Hey, yeah, I want to. I want to see how they do it. We'll see now. Let's let's just enjoy the ride. You know, yeah, just human get obliterated into hundreds of pieces, and they can rebuild them. Then I think anything's possible. Right, right. We'll make it yeah, bigger, yeah. faster, stronger. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ah. Uh, all right, so I, I think that's our rant for Dr. Stone. Still enjoying it, by the way, even with all our rants. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I mean, it's still I ridiculous. At the, very, at the very end, I did love that Taiju and Yuzuriha finally got to reunite with Senku that back in his camp. So, so that was, that was despite, a great moment. Despite our rants, so. still, still enjoy the show. Not a <laughs> hater, by the way. I forget yeah, yeah, I apologize for yeah. my hater glasses that I had on this week. I so. forget how long it's been, too, since they've actually been like united. At least a year, I think. Or, like, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, was, that, was, that was cool. Yep. Yep. So that's it for Dr. Stone. So now before I move on to Province Neverland. Um honestly again, Justin, like honestly, it's so hard to care much about the show knowing how much a different I was like different it is from the manga. So I don't know. Like I was watching it and I mean I saw like again they're trying to like put I guess like the morality question of like, oh, we shouldn't kill the demons, like we they're our friends and Stuff, but it's like i don't know it's so hard to it's so hard just to uh what's the word like be um like still keep up with like the story attached. yeah be attached to the story when like it just feels like we're just missing so much especially from like norman so I yeah no i i think that's very valid i think it's i think we even said last week like the main like rationale for these characters of norman and his crew that we've been introduced to like they are staying pretty true to some of like the core like root re- rationales and reasons of these characters but they're compressing it like so hard that i totally get sense what you're saying where it's like it's kind of just being thrown at you all at once and there's not much like exposition going on of like okay well what happened to you that led you you know to this point and Really, from my kind of perspective, it just feels like they really are trying to sprint to the end. Of I mean, the like, show. so to be fair, like they did show that last scene where, like, um, I guess they're about to reveal the backstory of what happened in Norman in the test facility. So it was at the very end, but still, just like, I don't know. That'd be the one positive is that it looks like they're hopefully going to show more about what happened in the the Lambda facilities, and then and then yeah. as you mentioned, who that individual is that Norman meets at the gate that Isabella drops him off at. So I think that I'm, I'm admittedly still excited for to see kind of how they do all that. But in terms of just like what I know of all like the arcs and things that have to happen, I'm just worried with what I've seen these last few episodes where they're really just trying to cram it together as tight as they can to just finish out the show. And then like this episode too, um, I guess like there's like a lot of contradictions being made by Norman too, like how, they're saying, oh, like we have um we have the coordinates from Minerva, and he says, Oh, Minerva's dead. Here's the real coordinates. It's in Grace Fieldhouse. So it's like, I guess like I guess we don't know who to believe. Yeah, that was way point. too convenient. <laughs> so I just dropped on there just like that. But So I guess it doesn't matter, but um that whole like gate to the other world being in Grace Fieldhouse, that is canon. That That's happens canon? in the series. Okay. But again, it just feels like but, drop, the point. The way that they drop it is is a little bit different. Like, so it just, it's not as just like, hey, Norman's here. Norman, like, it's hey, convenient. You're, you're, you're wrong. And, and just believe me. So I don't know. Yeah. I, the other thing I was going to ask you guys is I remember earlier in the season when. Um, uh, oh, my God. I just brain farted when uh, Sanju is telling them about the promise and, you know, like the whole like demon world, human world. And we were like asking whether or not there were two worlds in this episode. It feels like they clarified that like there is like separate worlds because that gate under Gracefield does is like the gate to the human world. Is that yeah? I forgot. Am I remembering right? That. You're remembering right, but I think originally someone thought it was like the Earth split into two halves, basically. Yeah, and, and maybe I'm just misremembering, but Something I feel like, like that, they yeah. did touch upon now with like I don't think I'd ever heard of it referred to as like a gate to like the human like part. Not literally, but you know, split. But into, this like, time two, two but parts. this time they were like, yeah. Oh, there is a gate under Grace Field House. So I don't know, it's really hard yeah. to keep things straight anymore when it's like I feel like there's small tidbits that like now I'm just being like, Well, it's probably different, but maybe it's the same and I'm just like being really jaded of like what they did to this diversion in the show but 
I don't know. Uh, question. Mm-hmm. So are all these like Norman Lack? Wait, Norman? Yeah, Norman mm-hmm. Lackeys. Like, are they all like terminally ill or something? Because that one chick is just having a f- seizure. Yep. So those that's canon as well, and they kind of allude to that with like that's a result of like all of the things that were done to them in the Lambda facility. Oh. What I can't remember though is Norman um coughing up blood. I can't I can't remember if that's how like series of events happen in the sh- in the series. I feel like I'll be honest, not, I but I could be misremembering. Low point- uh, you cut out I mean... Oh, uh, sorry. Uh-oh. Give, give your internet a second, Scott. It's got to build up some bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, try again. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I think I think I think we lost him. All right. So, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's just it's hard to keep, yeah. my, to keep my attention. Just, like even following the story, it's like it's just, it just just doesn't matter. Yes. Oh, Tasha, you want to say your point? <laughs> oh, again? are you back? <laughs> Were you saying I'm stuff? Back. Go, go, go. Yeah, go. No, Talk I, about I, your I, point. All right, really, really quickly. I just want to say uh, I'm a big fan of characters. I like character-driven stories. Norman was my favorite character from the first season. The low point of this season for me was the episode where they revealed him. I thought that whole episode was just a giant mess, way too rushed, and that made me have zero desire oh, to man. watch for, any for of the reveal episodes. of norman you have to read the manga it is so much more like emotional and, and well done i will i will actually go back i think once this is done i will go back and give the show its justice or the source material but uh i gotta say i didn't find i think maybe just because i'm over it i didn't find these last two episodes that bad i actually thought they were more entertaining than everything post episode two of the season where we figured out like oh they're at the bunker but the bunker scene or timeline lasted like one episode as opposed to you know 50 chapters in the manga um i am a big fan of norman's heel turn because i think it makes sense that he's been jaded and he's coming out with a lot of conviction to eliminate these uh demons i think the way they've done their characters though is basically you have all three sides of the argument you have emma who's like oh levy devy peace and happiness gonna win out you have norman who's on the other end of the spectrum who's like no we must kill them all and then you have ray who's like the cool-headed logical guy who's like we probably should kill them all because i don't think we can coexist that well but you know uh i'm just here to kind of be in between and give somebody the voice of reason <laughs> so but the problem is as you guys have mentioned those three played off of each other so well in the first season because we gave them room and time to develop these characteristics. In this season, it's just like cutting straight to the like stereotypical responses a character like that should have. So all of a sudden, you're just like, I'm just annoyed by Emma now. I like I'm not I'm not behind her in any way. I just feel like she's become annoying with her whining and just uncompromising nagging about we gotta do it the right way guys we've never compromised on our decisions before and then her one buddy was like that's right we're joined you Emma because you never say no and you're just like oh god this is like the ultimate cheese fest right now was convincing them that they should save monsters with like Don Gilda and the rest of the team back in the church that was probably your favorite moment yeah. last episode right that was that was 10 out of 10 amazing like that just of hurt course. me right right in every single body part so that was uh that part of the episode and just in general like the second half is disappointing but i actually do find norman and his crew fairly interesting um and i want to learn more about his beef with uh dirty toes girl and just see what happens there because i think that aspect of the show is interesting because even um what's his name jericho legolas said it he said hey listen once these kids have more kids yeah i'm gonna eat them i can't wait to try yeah. And he's gone. And he's gone. <laughs> but I agree with you, Sasha. I, I, yes, very valid. I guess for me, like I guess Are these um, humans out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, there it is. Um, so for me, I guess I don't particularly hate like characters like Emma as much as Sasha does. As long as I guess like I guess as long as the story can execute it well. But for me, um, for this part, it's just like it's hard for me to know who to believe because. Just Norman for me just felt like he just appeared out of nowhere. So even though you're saying a lot of things he says are canon, it's so hard for me to believe they are because like he just like he just says them outright. So it's hard 
Oh yeah. So it's hard to think. Like, wait, that, is he is he like is he saying the truth or is he like hide, is he just hiding it just because he really wants to kill the demons? Or yeah, his his reveal completely warped his revelations of like why he now acts the way he does. So and it's like, like I don't know if next week's episode to kind of Brian's point, like you know, are we going to see more of Lambda as like a flashback? And if they do that, then hopefully that at least like ties things a little bit better from Norman's perspective and forgives like the random ass reveal that happened. Um, because yeah, a lot, even the characters, like I know in the anime here, we haven't really seen much of like Norman's crew, but they're so fleshed out in the mall where you really get to learn like what happened to them and kind of what led okay, to kind yeah. of their hate. I mean, for me, it's demons. like, yeah, like him and his crew just appeared out of nowhere. So it's hard for me to get attached to his crew right now, just cause like, I just like, mm -hmm. They just appeared, what, two episodes ago? <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, what about that big reveal, though, when he's in the basement and they're like, hey, boss, you're not going to join them, right? Because we know they're your family. He's like, of course not. Yeah, they <laughs> get them, the big ass demon like chained up in there. <laughs> oh, my God. Bro, Norman doesn't play. I got to go That's back. I, I can't him. remember if, if any of that is canon. I got to go back. <laughs> Norman don't play, man. Um, uh, no, and I then, mean, David, to your point. I don't necessarily hate Emma. I just don't like how how much like they took the dial of Emma's like social justice warrior diehard attitude went from in the first season to this season. It went from like a five to like calculated. Listen, Norman, I don't want to give up on these kids. Very valid reasons how I want to get out of here to like a no, guys, no matter what, we yeah. can get we can get out of here. Actually, no, <laughs> I got I got to remember because I think I think earlier in the season I probably like, I did say too how I. I didn't like how she says like she wants to save all the children. I think I was saying too how you gotta get out of there. So I probably should remember what I was saying earlier. Yeah. No, you're good. Yeah. But I, I'm I'm kind of up in the air right now. I can't say I completely hate it, and I think just because I've already gone through the moment of knowing like I expect the worst, so I think I've loosened up on my uh, critique of the show. And now I just want to see how they figure out this whole thing with Norman. If they drop the ball with him against. Uh, Ray and Emma and potentially, you know, Isabel coming back into the picture. Uh, you, If they pull it off, I might say like, hey, that was actually a decent, you know, uh, collateral cov cover up, collateral damage. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. But uh, that's what, that's yeah, what that's what I'm warning too about this, because, yeah, we, we got Isabel coming after them. We got like uh, Emma and Ray going after like right. Wichka and Son Sonju. So it's like, are we going to cover that for like the next like what like five, four or five episodes we have left so i don't know how they got that's right 11 right i think so so yeah you know, i don't know how you're gonna you like tie that up if they're gonna do another season but it's like i don't know you, i don't know um, if you just have support for, for another season i don't, I don't know how i was gonna say can. after the fan base is just like review bomb the shit out of it like i don't know how popular it is in japan because honestly that's, that's really what matters so but I can't yeah. see them getting support for another season. That's. You know what they should have done is just replace this whole second season with the live action version of the movie that's oh, coming God. out in Japan. I think oh, there God. we go. That would have that would have done it that's, wonders. That's the that's the solution Give for people all what issues. they love. I mean, to be fair, I think I was Sasha was talking about this. Like that first season in the house is really like one of the high peaks of the show that I think Doug did such a good job of pulling people in of kind of this like you know, psych psychological, like almost horror esque kind of focus. And then now it has much it has kind of transitioned to more of like an action, like shonen type adventure show. Yeah. And but I, I, they did skip one of the best arcs, so And that's the yeah. tough part because the first season was so great because we were in the farm, it was more psychological, it was tense. And then once we were out of the farm you needed something to equate that, and we just didn't get that this season. It just jumped all over the place. So yeah. that was a tough part. I was all I will say I think... is like the um, bunker arc and the arc that was to come after that manga wise. Like those are two of the better like psychological arcs that are in the in the series. Hmm. And then after that, okay. it kind of switched to to like action more. So so it is even yeah. more frustrating of like what. You, it sounds like you guys all really loved from the first show. Like that is what was to come, and then they just cut that. So yeah. well, Tokyo Ghoul. But we shall see. Oh, we got a few more episodes. 
maybe they can surprise us all and the author you know working with the script writer can do something nobody ever foresaw uh, and i don't know get just... people to love them but yeah it's very slim chance <laughs> hashtag team norman hashtag kira jr let's do it <laughs> There I it think is. that's gonna end our discussion of Promise <clears throat> Neverland. So Sakujo. And then I think we're just gonna end the show right here because it's been going on for a little long. We have to get, get going. Yeah, too. we gotta so, speed up a little bit. So we're gonna end it right here. Wanna thank the audience for joining us on Twitch today. Thanks guys. Shout out to um everyone. Thank you. Okay. I actually couldn't see Twitch chat because I, I messed up one of my settings. So <laughs> thanks, thanks for, for my mods who carried me. Yeah. So we thanks guys. And then wanna thank the panel yeah, for joining us today. No problem. Thanks guys. <laughs> Always enjoy having every you guys week, on man. here. Yep, every week. A lot of fun. Yep. And then we'll Love see you guys. You. We'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.